Ladies and gentlemen, and in betweeners, we celebrate all forms of entertainment with singer songwriter, Glee alumni, and fashion trendsetter, I'll say. Yes, Rylan is here. We have actress, author, and director, Gabrielle Stone, is here to chat about her debut book, Eat, Pray, hashtag FML. Mm. Uh, filmmaker Jonathan Baker, a.k.a. Bo D, uh, from major studio films to independent features to musical theater, is here uh, with my guest co-host, everyone's man crush every day, DJ, event promoter, and stage hypnotist? Yes, Michael Swenson is here from LE Parties, just in time for San Diego Pride, and me, your favorite voice, host with the deepest voice. I just ruined that joke. That. <laughs> Let's start the show. <laughs> and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On The Rocks with Alexander, coming at you live, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On The Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord help us. There are no rocks in here. Well, because it makes no it makes noise on the microphone. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Sure John Baker. Just, like uh, attention to detail, Mr. Filmmaker is then. here. <laughs> yes, because they clink and then we get. Yeah, yes. Well, okay. thank you, John Baker, for kicking us off. Just yeah, just just <laughs> it is going to be a bumpy night. These drinks are strong tonight. Mm. Buttons and bows and pantyhose. This is on the rocks, a place where we're too glad to give a damn. Thank you to Santa Monica Pride for having me as your MC for the first ever Santa Monica Pride and the pub crawl through Santa Monica. Woo! Ooh, I barely yeah. survived. The next day, I did not do the walk of shame. During during Pride, we call it the stride for Pride. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Copyright. It, yeah, I'm going to, right? It ends mm -hmm. at the end of August, and then there's no excuse. Uh, okay, uh, thank you to our sober listeners for tuning in, though. We love you, too. Thank you for holding our hair back and driving us home. Drunk texting is literally the only sport that I'm amazing at, for which I have won awards, if you consider <laughs> court-mandated community service an award. <clears throat> I do. Twice. Thank you. <laughs> was that you? That was that us was on me. the side with our cute little orange overalls. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. we should do that. A new music video idea? Listen. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm going to do a duet with if you. If I <laughs> had a nickel. <laughs> yeah, true, right? <laughs> Only a nickel? I'll take it at this point. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, United Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Now I'm happy to announce we're on Roku. Of course, we are on Facebook Live, on Trendy Now in San Diego, True FM in Ohio, and on the West Coast on GED Ohio. Magazine. Ohio. Get out of here. Uh, and nationally on Queer 40. Uh, the show is brought to you in media ship, uh, partnership with Here TV. Here TV reaches millions of viewers each month. We are now on Amazon Prime, Facebook Watch, HearTV.com, and Here TV app. <sighs> for free. Whoop, whoop. Uh, I have a bone to pick with Hollywood. Mickey Mouse has been in 11 films, dun, dun. Uh, but we have 11 theme parks around this, this character, right? Meryl Streep, over 65 films and zero theme parks. Huh. I think there needs to be a collaboration between Dolly Parton and Meryl Streep. Right? Like Dollywood? Yes. Like Streep? Yeah, like like maybe just Dolly Street. It's Ooh, islands like in that. the street. Dolly islands street. in the street. Yeah. Right. Yes, you could have like a Mamma Mia mm -hmm. section of or it. Devil Wears Prada, Sophie's there we Choice, go. Roller oh, Coaster. Yes. Which 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 path do you choose? I mean, it's all there. A Dingo Ate My Baby, like the Australian. That's the best. Right, a Dingo Ate Your Baby. Uh, anyway, so that's just my little thought. Our website has been updated. Go to ontherocksradioshow.com for everything on the rocks for free. Listen, download. Uh, sneak peek at our Instagram, Mama Rose in the chat room as usual on ubngo.com and Facebook, ask your question. She will text it to me. If it's an amazing question, uh, I'll answer it on the air. Kurt, hello, Kurt, to our engineer. Hey, how you doing? Good, yeah. how are you? Yeah, how are you? I'm so, doing good. Yeah, so, so good to see you. Thanks for using hair gel today. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I'm an I joke, he looks like a lesbian cocktail waitress on an oil rig. I mean. <laughs> 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 uh, no, we love, we, we love cocktail waitresses. I mean, someone's got to bring out the drinks, right? Yes. Well, th there you go. There you so, go. There you uh, go. Kurt, hurry up because we have very talented people here. Do you have a pun for us? So I, I always have a pun for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it fast. I'm oh, sweating. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I, I buy all my guns from a guy called T-Rex. He's a small arms dealer. Ooh. Oh. You so guys? bad. So bad. <laughs> Do not give yourself laughter. Don't play the laugh to that. That yeah. didn't yeah. earn Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And he'll listen to a pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just so excited we have, you know, some straight people here today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for that, Kurt. Um, 
really look forward to that every week. Uh, like us on Twitter and Instagram on The Rocks on Air. Facebook on The Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I will show up. Info on The Rocks Radio Show. Speaking of showing up, come see me Sunday, July 14th. I am an MC for Ellie Party, San Diego Pride. Drag yes. yourself to brunch at 10 a.m. That is sold out every single year. Um, and for the mega pool for thousands until 7 p.m., go to leparties.com. I will be joined by some of your favorite RuPaul girls, hot mans, and girls. And and we have uh, we have the sexy mafia strippers that are going to be at the show as well. Oh, oh my. We just announced it yesterday. When you see the picture, it literally... I like, saw the picture. I had to close oh, my okay. Instagram real yep. fast. Yep. It's going to be good. Have <gasps> your guys' Instagram turned to porn? Yes. Like, everybody's shirtless, in underwear, yes. or... And well, I'll be like at a grocery store. I've had this talk with my best friend, yes. It's and you feel years. like uncomfortable and then you're like, wait, I'm not looking at anything wrong. They right. posted this and they used to be normal when I started following. No, but right. I have to talk to right. my yeah. best friend because he does that now. Uh, yeah. How many ass shots do you need to see? A well, ton, exactly, apparently. Right? Yeah. And, and even for, you know, we're talking about the LGBT community, but the ladies are getting pretty sexified too. Yeah. I've seen some sexy pictures on yours, girl. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. Mine's actually pretty clean for like considering. You know. <laughs> well, considering after Everyone I met has Ray, <laughs> hashtag FML, I, I heard what you did last summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So did the world, apparently. Yeah. Mm, we're going to talk about that, too. Um, also, you can see me at Gay Wine Weekend, a three-day celebration in Sonoma County, uh, July 18th through the 21st. Get all the information at gaywineweekend.com. Literally, people come from across the United States for this, and I'm going to be hosting their drag brunch as well. Also, I'm excited to announce, we just booked this this week, On the Rocks will be on the seas for uh, the uh, our debut cruise. We've never been on a cruise ship. I'm really nervous, by the way, because <laughs> unlimited drinks and nowhere to go. No, it's great. It's fantastic. Cruise ships are, that's where I do my hypnosis shows a lot. So, oh, that's right. You yeah, do. Yeah. And so. Um, but you're like responsible. Like you go to the no, gym. No, no, I'm not responsible. <laughs> no, remember what happens at sea stays at sea. So it's great. I think I'm going to oh. be lost at sea. Well, you know, that could be... I mean, you'll have a great time, though, for okay. sure. Well, it's it's a new cruise line called Vakaya, and it's for LGBT and LGBT allies. Um, it's going to P-Town to Canada from August 11th to the 18th with a full ship of divas. Here's on their first cruise. Uh, Tony Award winner Kristen Chenoweth, American Idol's Catherine McPhee, Glee's Alex Newell, Funny Man or Lady Leslie Jordan, and Miss Lady Bunny. Go to myvakaya.com. On the Rocks is going to be doing a morning show. And by morning show, I mean noon, because nobody's getting up <laughs> early for that. And we're going to be interviewing these celebrities. We're going to be pulling people from the audience and interviewing them. Um, and we're going to do a special segment called What Happened Last Night? Oh, what happened was. Yeah, what well, happened was. That's going to be like the hangover show, not the morning that, that's show. That's how it's going to yeah. be. Like, I will, I will need a liver transplant. Well, probably before I go, too. Uh, let me formally introduce my bestie, my twinsie. You can't even tell us apart for the night. My guest co-host, keeping me in check. Uh, also, my boss for San Diego Pride, mm -mm -mm, Ellie Parties. Uh, California resident DJ producer and event producer, Michael Paul, or Michael Swanson, Swenson, uh, spins at some of the hottest nightlife spots in Southern California, the Abbey in West Hollywood, Riches in San Diego. I have paid their rent many, many times, I'm my sure. friend. <clears throat> you can also hear him spin inside the happiest place on Earth, the world-famous Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. Headlines are massive nighttime, EDM-inspired events such as Glowfest, Electronica, uh, get it, Electronica? Mm. Yeah, Electron. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Mad Tea Party, spilling the tea, uh, to name just a few. In addition to pushing new and cutting-edge music, he has produced tracks for events and shows around the world. Recently uh, produced the opening track for the LA Lakers, by the way. What? Way to butch it up. Good yeah, you. right? Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the who? Okay, I thought the Lakers was like a new musical with like mermaids and... No. It's like a football thing. It's like you, a sports a, thing. Yeah, it's I actually do watch football for real and for the actual game. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, like well. I have jerseys and everything. <laughs> okay, um, Michael Paul is also a former Billboard reporting DJ who uh, supports hundreds of artists with Billboard music. Currently, he focuses on this production company, LE Parties, throwing some of the most epic nightclub events and raging pool parties in Las Vegas and San Diego. And I'm not using epic lightly, by the way. Uh, they're pretty epic, I was just saying. They're... Like I've seen Amazing. parties and I'm like these are pretty epic so. yeah and you go to other parties you're like hmm. I'm not judging <laughs> <laughs> I see you, mm -hmm. I see you. Um, also, when he goes by Michael Swenson, he is one of the world's best stage hypnotists, which is so insane Crazy. to me. Uh, he has performed around the world on the largest stages and travels with Atlantis events, performing his hypnotist show. Uh, and he's a hypnotist consultant for some of Hollywood's biggest film and TV shows. Uh, first time to the show and a guest co-host, yeah. Michael Swenson, Woo! a.k.a. Michael Paul. Oh, please, please. Have a seat, have a seat. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the middle of, of, of Pride season, and Violet, yep. I know you have performed at many, many LGBT events. Every single one. No, well, I'm kidding. <laughs> you you <laughs> don't want to go to every single one, because, you know, sometimes you get calls and you're like, hey, we're at, you know. I've done coffee tables before, so I will take what you give me, so thank you. Actually, because we've had Debbie Holiday, who does the circuit a lot. We've had a lot of performers. Um, 
And they actually like the smaller events because not only do they get to spend time with the crowd, but it's more of an intimate experience. And it's just it's just a better overall feel. Yeah, it depends. I mean, sometimes the the clubs afterwards are more fun than the actual Pride event. And it's probably one of your parties. So there oh, you go. <laughs> which is epic. <laughs> yes. exactly. Which is epic. Thank you. Oh well, and I know that you love the gays. Like the gays are I like do. in your back pocket. I do. do you go to Pride events? Um, I do. And I actually, my first film that I directed was a heavy LGBT theme um, as well. So yeah, they've. I have best friends that, that I love to support the community. Well, Thanks. we love you too, girl. Especially after reading this, this <laughs> spill the tea in this book. Um, now, Jonathan. I mean, how? I mean, I don't see you going. Well, number one, you're very, very busy. We're going to go over your bio in a minute. Um, is is Pride a big thing for you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My um, one of my closest relatives is uh, kind of an amazing man who's credited, I think, for he's like one of the one of the ten people who was the architect for turning over the gay ban in the military. Oh, and that's my uncle Tom, and I'm wow. He is my closest relative. So. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. And he was in the military. What's his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Carpenter. I love a hot daddy. Uh, Tom Carpenter, my hero. That's that's huge. Mm -hmm. And you know, as filmmakers, you guys, you know, diversity and equality is such a hot button. Uh, we've talked about it on the show because, of course, I'm from the community. I'm in support of it, but to a certain extent, I still want good actors playing the roles, and I still want good storylines. And if it's not good, it doesn't matter who, what group it's representing. Exactly. Right. Anyway, um, but what sets LE parties aside from all of these Pride events? So uh, I was actually, um, we were talking a little bit earlier about, um, you know, everyone goes to a party, you go to the same party, it's always like pretty much the same thing. Um, be seen or, you know, try to be someone you're not or whatever. Or just to Instagram, I was here, yeah, and you leave it. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like this sort of fake thing and one thing I uh, we really like about pool parties is and first off the facade of like pool party oh you have to have the nice body and you have to have this and that it's not true because we have everyone there trust me when you, you will experience we, it we, we have some, some pictures and I, I, I'm, I'm kidding because well I hate the outdoors and water and people <laughs> all in one but I love I, I love your pool parties well and, and the reason we do, and, uh, <laughs> Ryan and I will sit in the back of the bar and we'll oh just, no I'm, I'm the wicked witch I don't get in the water I'll just melt no do you think I go in the water girl mm. we have floats they'll keep you afloat you little oh, okay. like but Girl, i am afloat so here's okay. the thing we started this about like <laughs> six years ago and we've done these parties it, it was just sort of like a hey let's do this fun thing and then it turned into like people come up and like oh my gosh i met this new person as my best friend like yep. I, I would have never talked to this person before because oh they're so untouchable but you know liquid courage all of a sudden they start meeting they're mm -hmm. talking socializing because mm -hmm. at a nightclub it's you know it's so loud and yeah. dark and a pool party is like light and vibrant mm -hmm. and airy and it just has a different energy yeah definitely it, but you do have different people there you know you've got you know bigger small um, old young old gay, young straight and you see in our pictures that it's like it's a plethora of people yeah and everyone just like gets along it's just it's hard to explain until you go and actually do it because no, no judgment no judgment. No judgment. I mean, and it there's a party. It's a fun time. Not like we think of gay parties. It's like, I'm going to sit in the corner and be like, mm, 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 mm. Pots and pants. 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 Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Exactly. Exactly. And then you usually stay with your own friends because, God forbid, you should talk to a stranger if you're not like. No, so this is one of the things we've always done. We get these giant, my business partner, John, he's crazy and I love him to death, but we buy these giant inflatable rafts that hold like eight people. But if you see in our pictures, there's like 19 people on this one eight person raft. I don't think all 18 of those people know each other, but they do. Like your hostel rooms on your trip. Yeah, but they do. Uh, <laughs> that sounds kind of like the Titanic. Right? Well, right? Yeah. Nothing there goes was down, room though. on that nothing door, bitch. <laughs> 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 but it's just cool because you're like, all of a sudden you're like, hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? And then you meet these totally. people and like, it's see you at the next party, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So and you, and you do build friendships like you experience. Unless you say hello, unless you kind of put yourself out there, whether you're with a crowd, by yourself, whether you're confident who you are or not confident, who cares? Well, you're always with your, you, like, when you're with your friends, your cliques, it's really hard to, like, you I know, like... I hate my friends. Well, okay, well, then you can just, like, turn your back to them and be like, hello. But, um, so they can stab me in the back I, again? I don't think so. <laughs> again? <laughs> you're like, ouch. West Hollywood. But, no, um, uh, well, I mean, I, I guess just just one of those things where, you know, you... you you, when you experience the people that are there and th it's light like we're not really we don't play like hard music it's it's vibrant it's light it's you know pop to this and that um and then each party we do kind of has a different theme it's not always the same thing like this year we're doing a a night swim oh, which fun. like oh, like so a funny. night swim and it's fun. very like house like chill kind of fun like vibes. some neon going on mm -hmm. um i don't want to give it too much away oh. but because you guys pull up all the stops with special effects with lighting with you put such an yeah. emphasis wow. on building that you don't just hang up like gay yeah. 
yeah. buy flags and say, okay, everybody spend no, no, no. 20 bucks. We do a lot Special of things. I mean, we do things like, this is crazy. People think I'm crazy, but um, I sent, I literally sent rooms. Like when you walk into these lobbies or spaces, all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, it smells really good in here. And all of a sudden, it reminds you. Yeah, like a smell. Oh, like a sense memory, too. I love that. So we do, um, in Vegas, we do a Club Piranha, and I literally sent the whole place with, like, our signature scent. Oh, I love that. And people, like, it's like a childhood memory, like, comes back to you, and you're like, oh, you know, you smell cotton candy, and you remember this. That's That's probably the best piranha ever smelled. That's amazing. Hey, I love piranha. It's a lot oh, no, of fun. no, it's always a good time. Yeah, but, but it, you're right. <laughs> but it smells better when we're there. Yeah, I'm of course. Just gonna yeah. Say. <laughs> yeah, but that's good because it's it's what your brand is, and and all four of you have such unique brands that you know you know when your name is is attached to something, even sure. when your tra- projects vary. Like you two, your projects are all over the map, mm-hmm. from comedy to thriller to to drama, um, and, and your new film, which is. I don't, I don't even know what I would even title that if I worked at Blockbuster. I'd be like, "What's this movie about?" I'd be like, "Huh." Yeah, quantum mechanics. You quantum mechanics. Mm. Yes. Well, yes. Well, we're going to talk about that's that. The easy one. That's the easy yeah. one. Sure. Um, uh, and Rylan, your brand is continuing, like evolving. Like when I say, like you're a, a trend center, you just go through all of your videos and you see that your look changes, but your brand is essentially the same. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And that does take time, and it takes a lot of effort to build that. But curating, it also curating. You're curating. Oh, thank you. You're it's welcome. like Instagram. Uh, uh, there it is. Analysis, mm-hmm. yes. or 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 it's just that you're being yourself, and that mm-hmm. never changes. Honestly, that's what a concept! Whoa. Incredible, I, that's really right? Hard. That's really hard <laughs> for people to do. Succeed though. being Cheers yourself. Oh, Impossible. Love our drugs, right? Oh, thanks. <laughs> I like that. Very good. Um, but it also said your your audience at 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 ease when they do walk in because it is like coming I mean, home. You're, you you kind of know. You know, know there's always expect. that thing when you walk into like you just go to a friend's house and it's a party, then it's people that you know, and you're still kind of like. You know, there's always that thing when you walk into like you just go to a friend's house and it's a party, then it's people that you know, and you're still kind of like. You know, it's that awkward, like, you just kind of look around the room and see, and then, you know, you get a drink or something, and then you kind of feel a little more at ease. Every party's like that. Every club's like that. You know, everywhere you go is like that when you first walk in. But then once you kind of, like, you know, if you're at this party of a friend's house, you're like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And you start meeting these people, you feel more comfortable. And that's one of the things that, like, when our parties um, happen, people do that. I mean, literally, I have made so many friends um, going to parties like these, that uh, I have met just by talking to them rather than it being at the club and just like, you know, it's, it's, oh, sorry. I'll always choose a house party over something else. Sure, because there agreed. Is that. Especially in L.A., you don't know if you're going to meet the most amazing cocktail waitress or you don't know if you're going to meet a filmmaker, but it doesn't even matter because that's not what people are talking about. Yeah. They're just talking about normal things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say you're going to meet your, your best significant other at someone, you know, like someone, you know, like I met my husband at a friend's party. Mm-hmm. Which I still believe this day was somewhat of a setup, but maybe not. <laughs> uh, but it's good true, friend. like so. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it just it seems like one of those things where you just feel comfortable and natural, and you can be yourself, right? Be yourself. Yeah, crazy. When you're yourself, weird people concept. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I have to know this dichotomy: a hypnotist, like yeah, what? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, yeah, I, I start when I was yeah. young, when I was younger. I did magic. I've always done like magic. I was fascinating, like you know, show card tricks and stuff like that. I got tired of carrying stuff around, literally stuff. And you're like, a DJ too, that's funny. Here's my Well, magic now you book. don't have to, but yeah. Right, well, I've always been like music. So uh, in all my shows, I've always been very like musically oriented. Mm-hmm. So DJ just sort of like kind of happened. Um, Are you a musician? But, you're, you actually play or um, how does it work? Well, I mean, I produce sort of, gotcha. I guess okay. you could say like I can get behind Ableton keys. Ableton and all that kind of uh, stuff? Yeah, I use Ableton and Logic and got stuff it, like that, it, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but if I were to sit behind a piano, I mean, I can like crank something out sort of, but you know, totally it's, it's, yeah. If you know your fake chords, you can... Pretty much, yeah. yeah there it is. And then you just make it up on, you go, oh, la, la, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not to downplay people that can actually play because that's the whole thing. Oh, yeah. I'm, those people, I envy I envy those people, mm-hmm. yeah. But no, I, I just got tired of carrying around stuff. Um, I literally, way back in the day, saw an ad that said, be a hypnotist. <laughs> like, in a magazine. I'm like, no. <laughs> that's funny. That's crazy. So, well, here's the thing. I saw a hypnotist at a fair, and the, the thing that I've never done to this day, I saw, um, they took gummy bears, and they gave gummy bears to this girl and said, eat them, and they will talk in your mouth. Mm-mm. And literally, they were like, oh, and a girl's oh, like, is this gluten free? Don't eat me, right? <laughs> 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 no, no Sacramento. Great. So, anything goes. Oh, yeah. Sacramento. Old? I don't uh-huh. care. How old? Uh, oh, gosh. I was like, 13, this 12, is 13. The vulnerability of children. Yeah, this is great. right. Go and I, so I good um, advertising. Mm, right, yeah, and so yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Eat your gummy bears. Yeah, this is great. Uh, and I just thought it was cool, and I just you know always thought it was neat. And then later in life, I saw this ad, and I went to the school, and I've been to multiple schools for it, multiple trainings. It's kind of like a never-ending training wow. um, for hypnosis, and. 
I mean, I've performed on the world's largest stages. Um, I do, um, we actually just finished, um, I work with a show on Netflix called Magic for Humans. Mm. And I'm uh, one of their magic um, consultants that kind of do some stuff behind the scenes. And we just uh, finished season two, oh, uh, which will be coming out um, sometime in the near future. Magic for Humans on Netflix. Magic for Humans I'm gonna on Netflix. I'm going to go watch it tonight. Wow. Yeah, it's super now, fun. Is this, have you been to the Magic Castle? Is that the oh, community? Yeah. It's like the whole thing, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like hypnosis and magic is like, it's sort of two separate things because yeah. like I've always been very interested in magic forever and you know, I always will. Right. Um, but with hypnosis stuff, like I said, I don't have to care anything right. and I can really, um, really do some cool stuff with people. Sure. Uh, just like one on one. And it's stuff that like, I first thought this is BS. Like yep. this is not, but I have done stuff that's like, people would not do this. It's, wow. in, in terms of, because there's, there's a couple different sides to it. Like, is it psychological unpacking like past stuff or is it just kind of entertainment versions? Well, or I only stick with, therapeutic? I only stick with entertainment style gotcha. stuff. And okay. I have actually helped people like lose weight, stop smoking, yeah. um, oh, memory concentration. Whole, do it now. What? Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm ready. But, but I, I have is, so uh, much work for you, <laughs> dude. I mean, oh, you read this first. So you're going to need some research. <laughs> but it's not, but the thing is like, it's not what people think right off the bat. Like you think, oh, I'm going to lose weight with hypnosis. No, right. it's a mindset of like getting you to do the right things, right. getting you to eat right. And it's that motivation. It can't you know, be that It's easy. like Adderall <laughs> of your mind. Great. It just gets you to do it. Oh, that's how you should advertise it in LA. <laughs> yeah. Adderall for your mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Internal Adderall. I like yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. But so. I think it's this connection to people that you're making through through this job that you're also making, like we said, with your Yeah, I mean, people kind of joke and like, oh, a DJ, you're basically controlling a room. A dance floor, a flow. But you have to read the room first. For because sure. Some For of sure. these entertainment uh, events, they'll have the DJ say, okay, what are all the gays listening to? Let's play the same 20 songs I've heard all damn week. Yeah. And mm. the room is not responding, but they don't know how to modify Change their up. set. Right. It's really yeah. kind of... Well, I mean, that's one of the things. I mean, I, I believe it or not, um, I was DJing at the Abbey and someone had com um, came in and was like, hey, I'm with Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, we really like, we've been scouting around, this was like eight, nine years ago. And they're like, we really like how you, you're like different. You're, you're playing, you know, pop to dance to this, to mm -hmm. that EDM, whatever. Um, we have a show, you know, called uh, Glow Fest. This was like way a long time ago. Do you want to come and try it? And I was like, all right. And we did it. And I was there. I've been there for like eight years. That's crazy. Um, and with some of the biggest shows too. I, I do their like live um, show, live show. Yeah. Wow, I'm li like a live DJ, cool. New Year's Eve specials. We, oh, we posted fun. pictures and like for one of the mad tea, you had like the, like the rabbit. I was ears. a rabbit. I was the white rabbit. That was the Alice in Wonderland. So white that. rabbit DJ. Yeah. 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 Now, does anybody else go to Burning Man? Uh, Not I, anymore. I, I've Not never anymore. been. You've been? Uh, yes, but they don't like the gays. I feel like I died from heat exhaustion. Really? Oh yeah, I, I could see you like with a black umbrella with like a veil on you the side. Remember when Lady Gaga and American Horror Story walked on the beach? <laughs> no, anyone with yes. the with I mean, like I do the remember the black that. veil yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, all the black. Yes. That's like that that's it. It's hotel, like based right? off of my funeral. Yeah, that's what I would look like at Burning Man. So. I only bring it up because I find it hard to find venues that actually kind of ride the crowd the, the way that that a DJ does. So the fact that you're describing this to me is actually quite well, great. I mean, I've, it's, it's a rare talent. I've never it's been to talent. Burning Man, but I've seen, I mean, I've seen and I've heard stories, you know, I guess that's one of those things, if you experience it, you'll know, but if yep. you don't. But um, I mean, I've seen, there's tons of like music and different stuff. You should it, do it once. Like you should just sure. do it once, I, just I, like you should jump out of plane I just once. don't like the sand. Like I, 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 mean, I don't, I don't like, like the heat, I don't like people, I don't like smells. <laughs> I'm advocating well, for you it. you should stay I'm, home that day, <laughs> that week or however long it is. I'm kidding, I love people. <laughs> uh, I'm advocating for it simply because that that's where I've experienced the most of that kind of vibe. That's all. Really? Oh, well, my sure. friend, my, uh, my really good friend, Rob, he is like adamant, like you need to go. It's your thing. You need to go and you need to go through the human. I, uh, it's like the human um, bath car wash or something. Yes, I don't know. Like that. everyone gets naked. And there's you just, that. You there's go that. through. I don't. Uh, yeah. Not, my mind I'm has not, not wrapped my head around Took a turn. That. Took yeah. a turn. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to see that. I, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I've not done that personally, but I know of it. And I think it's interesting. But I, it's it's personal. Like you go if you need to go. You don't have to go. Like it's a thing. Is that. it true that you can parachute in? Because I know it like costs money or something, but I was for heard sure. if you parachute in, you can get in for free. <laughs> He's like, um, for sure. No, no, no. For you sure. definitely can. It's, no, that's the one thing that I like. It's $500 to $800. Right. My friend did it. Yes. Nobody really cared. <laughs> it's And she was like, but I want hair. It's not for amateurs. Wait, though. she parachuted Wait, I don't in heels? Understand yeah, because right she was trying to do a whole thing yeah, and yeah, nobody yeah. gave a crap. No, this is true. This is true. Well, yeah, because huh. yeah. You can totally man. vomit, but it's, that is not an amateur <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, that's a professional parachute kind of thing. Like, it's But they'll send you with somebody, it. too, though. 
Uh, so like well, you'd hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're on your own. If anyone That's needs intense. to make an entrance that badly, like there's deeper issues. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's called I, cutting the line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can do it at the new Star Wars land at Disneyland. It's yeah, fine. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> anyway, so that's well, fascinating to me. But I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, need to come um, to one of your parties because I've been looking for something like that. For sure. Oh yeah, come. Um, yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> he he's gonna be our our drag show host. Ready. And it's I'm I'm so excited to have you. Like I really am Great. so excited. Are well, you be, in drag? No. God no. No. I know. That. That, I'm serious because I'm actually. Wait, why not? Mayhem Miller is actually doing I've, the show. I'm doing all the fillers. I'm doing the audience participation, I've never, which I can do in my sleep. I've never I seen a drag show specifically a drag brunch where the host is not a drag queen so that's a very interesting because we're mixing and it up a little bit I like that. See, do you see how we're changing it no, it's I not like the it. same thing because i'm gonna go in the audience and i'm like where are you from who'd you sleep with last night is this him blah 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 yes. blah blah we're gonna oh, keep wow. we're gonna keep it going that so the queens can we love yeah. a commentary so that's, yes yes yeah. Yeah. yeah, even when they don't want to, I'll do commentary at a funeral. Like, I will just do How it. does that even work? Like, they're really quiet, I guess, right? No, be like, oh my God, do you see what they put them in? Mm. Oh <laughs> my they God. didn't pay for the good box. If That's I, the cardboard box. If I die before you, please do my funeral. There it is. Okay. You heard it here first. That's, an, that's quite an invite. No, that's but you know. That's a huge. I mean, it's such a big deal because I know how, like, guarded you are. With, like, oh, no. Brand. Like, you know how yeah. people plan their weddings? I plan my funeral. Yeah. It should be a party and yeah. it should be fun. Wait, and, I like, did that when I was in yeah. seventh grade. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And they're like, have you planned See? your wedding? I'm like, no, I'm not going to plan. Like, I have no, my wedding. If you, that's, I think about this is great. I love this about you. Good. No, I mean, you're going to go out, so why not go out with a bang? And you want the people there to feel like they're with you and be like, oh, that's so him. Yeah, yeah, don't no. cry, like God. No, they can it, cry. no well, I, I no. This, this I, I mean, good. you're rid of me I'm now, so like celebrate. <laughs> but <laughs> prepare to die while you're alive, so you can live. Profound. There you go. Is that the name of your next film? Writer director. It could be. You you heard it here. As he reaches for the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I think <laughs> he, I think he needs a little bit more. Yes. <gasps> All right, let's get the show on the road. I want to formally introduce our panel. Oh, thank Such you. an eclectic group. You know, we bring we bring people Thanks. from all walks of entertainment together on the show because everybody is welcome. Oh, good. Uh, uh, let me introduce Jonathan Baker with over 40 major theatrical films to his credit, 10 of which have achieved number one at the box office. Jonathan has made the transition from studio exec to producer, writer, director seamlessly. Having worked on franchises such as Resident Evil, Underworld, and Spider-Man, he's executive produced the Sundance award-winning film Crown Heights, uh, the musical um, feature Basmati Blues with Brie Larson and Donald Sutherland, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, some other noteworthy films include uh, Closer, Adaptation, Big Fish, Boogeyman, Exorcism of Emily Rose, Lords of Dogtown, Oliver Twist, directed by Roman Polanski, uh, Running with Scissors. I I'll talk to you offline about that film because mm -hmm. oh. love the book. Yeah. Um, and Silent Hill, which of course we love Silent Hill. Also co produced uh, uh, the documentaries Fang vs. Fiction on AMC, The Real Exorcist, wow. and uh, Real Premonitions on wow. Annie. We are going into the closet for this stuff. No, because this is, this is who you are. Bring and it this out. is what we're seeing. Okay. And I. And we're going to talk I about this you. journey from big studio films mm. to, to everything. <laughs> Upcoming films uh, include uh, Sylvie. Is that how you pronounce it? Sylvie. 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 Starring Tessa Thompson and uh, just announced Ava Longoria. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Got huge uh, oh, notice. Wow. And uh, The Banker starring Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, most recently, he made his directorial... Uh, the rectorial. <laughs> wow. Oh, Davey, well, you are going really? to the Ellie party. Some would say that's accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, with There's a story there, too. Oh, oh uh, well, we're going to hear that. Hey, you're uh, with an absurdist satire, Manifest Destiny Down, Space Time, which he go. also stars in. Um, and this uh, debuted at the I, uh, IFS Film Festival. Based on real science, uh, it's a wild, ridiculous ride into the illog illogic of quantum mechanics and religion, Good. which kind of you kind of grew up in your household, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I come from a, a very interesting, like, um, parental pair. Uh, one was pretty religious and the other one was pretty skeptical. So it, it brings to life that level of, like, opposition but now the science and religion people are kind of getting along and they're seeing eye to eye which is kind of awesome so if you don't know about this this is what it's about like take a look investigate it's really like this is a moment that everyone needs to be awake it's very interesting things going on well, where things where people need to communicate like you, like you just said yeah 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 i mean in terms of like we've all i think we've grown up in a world where you know if you were religious you were religious and if you were scientific you were scientific right. we are now at a precipice where religion and science are literally staring at the same phenomenon going, I think we agree. And I think that's amazing. I mean, it's very inspirational stuff. 
Uh, I totally agree, and I think the religious faction has kind of taken a breath and be like, okay, let's explore what it is that we're actually believing in, and let's explore some of the history behind that yeah, and to I, have better conversations. Yeah, and the better conversations, I think, be uh, begin with separating, or, or just kind of taking a step back from religion, like organized religion, and calling it spirituality for a start. Yes. And then we can kind of talk... Oh. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain direction. Baby steps. You're ba speaking you. baby my steps. language. Baby steps. And yeah. you, you grew up like in a deeply Catholic home, right? I grew up in a, yeah, no, I, I mean, that's, that's actually very interesting that you said that because yes. my dad um, actually taught science in the high school that I went to okay. um, for years um, okay. and then did sports medicine, but he is like a devout Catholic. Okay. And so it was the separation that he had always kind of taught me, I think, which is why I didn't have such a negative um, association with Catholicism because mm. it was very much like this is religion and this is science right, and right. it was presented to me in more of a spirituality way which is probably why I like right. the idea and even I guess the iconography of religion I don't associate it with right. something bad I associate right. it and with one shouldn't. I, I no think, exactly yeah, one shouldn't. so that's yeah. that's actually really interesting yeah yeah, yeah. I think that's a, well one of the the lead character is inspired by uh, my ex fiance who I dearly love and we're still friends but she grew up in a Catholic um, mm. uh, household and so and when I was kind of writing the project I was basing a lot of it on sort of like inspiration from both of the main uh, stars of the movie and and the other guy who, who comes from a, a very interesting background his dad with a was a physicist oh wow and and so when I started to kind of design design the project for them it was just like it just kind of felt together like that that's awesome so very different perspectives coming together fascinating stuff oh. We're going to get into this because sure, it, sure. it really, really fascinates yeah. me. Um, additionally, he's producing several Broadway shows, August Rush, adaptation for Broadway, as well as the Broadway adaptation of The Harder They Come, and Spamalot, the first Broadway uh, revival. Um, and uh, his production company just finished the play American Sun, starring Kerry Washington, oh which God. Netflix wow. uh, picked up. Nice. Prior to this, you guys, he worked on Wall Street at uh, Salomon Brothers Asset Management and wow. Institutional Sales. Going back. And on Broadway, having worked with <laughs> Billy Joel, The Rolling Stones, Diane Warwick, Neil Young, Paul Simon, many, many other legendary artists. Also an actor. Oh, he also studied musical theater, so we love him. That's right. Uh, Best Actor Award for his performance in Thank You for Not Smoking, uh, official entry in the Sundance Film Festival. He's also a professor uh, of feature on. film and entertainment economics at Carnegie oh, Mellon's Master's of Entertainment Industry Management That's Program right, at the kids. High School of Publicity. Also, we should bow. Honestly. I know. I thought I was busy. Like, I mean, yeah. it's like, I don't have a How high enough IQ time? to no, be no. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also uh, teaches at a university uh, in... Uh, Italy, by the way. Bologna. Bologna. We, we love a good Bologna, Bologna. sandwich. I, love I literally wrote here, and you can even see, when the hell do you sleep? Please welcome Jonathan Baker. Yay! <laughs> well, it's very nice to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Also joining us, which I'm very, very excited because I literally read, uh, I read this book in literally one day. And that's the truth because you sent me the copy and I was like, okay, I'm done. And you're like, what? Uh, <laughs> Gabrielle Stone has been acting professionally for years, following in the footsteps of her very talented parents, legendary scream queen, whom we all love and adore, Dee Wallace and the late Christopher Stone. Uh, she started in The Lighthouse alongside Danny Glover and Kurt Angle, received rave reviews. Uh, and this was like the first role that really put you on the map in Lionsgate, Speak No Evil. Uh, then completed the first installment of Anchor Bay's Zombie Killers Elephant's Graveyard with Billy Zane and Misha Barton, by the way. Mm, yeah. uh, starred in the hit indie drama Swell. Worked opposite Luke McFarland mm, in the horror film uh -huh. Rock, Paper, <laughs> Dead, directed by Tom Holland, starring Michael Madsen, Tatum O'Neill, and Maureen uh, McCormick. Completed the romantic comedy The Competition opposite Chris Klein. Again, girl, I need to go set with you. I know. And Thora Birch. <laughs> um, and had a successful festival run, and we're going to take a little peek at one of the scenes uh, from her directorial debut, It Happened Again Last Night, for which she also received Best Actress at the Pasadena International Film Festival and the Beverly Hills Film Festival. Um, she grew up dancing and playing sports. Uh, her choreography YouTube video is up, and you should oh, God. watch it. You amazing. did. He dug. He dug. Oh, girl, I do. <laughs> Uh, she's always loved acting, uh, but recently began writing and directing after a shock revelation in her personal life in 2017, uh, which we're going to talk about. She went on a solo journey to Europe where she discovered how to heal herself. She wrote the book, Eat, Pray, hashtag FML, to share with the women of the world, and I believe with everybody in the world, um, how to get through relationships and how to find yourself. Whatever's good for your soul, do that. Please welcome Gabrielle Stowe. Yay! Yay.
And last but certainly not uh, least, I'm such a huge fan. I love your videos. I listen to your music over and over. Ryland, singer, songwriter, and dancer. Uh, Ryland is a study in contradiction, the independent artist who first appeared on the scene with his 2015 EP, Chemical, uh, is a charismatic looker who describes himself as a freak and a weirdo. We're going to talk about his growing up because there's a duality there. What's real? What's not? He's a former musical theater kid boop, boop, uh, who loves 70s glam rock and 80s synth pop. Um, New Orleans native, uh, has been expressing himself through his performance since he was a child. He got his start at age five doing theater, took his first dance class at age 11, going on to study ballet, jazz, tap, and modern dance. Get his out. dancing yeah. is amazing. amazing, by the way. Get out. Um, after being told he was doing it wrong in the musical theater world, he started what? writing his own music at 14. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. I studied music at Chapman University, and oh, they wanted wow. me to do opera. And I'm like, I'm not an opera singer. Oh, listen, uh, we can talk about that. When I tried to apply to college, it was very much like, you're going to do classical and jazz. And I was like, but that's not what no. I do. <laughs> they almost anyway. killed my love of music. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh. I was not at your level, though. I was like, rah, rah, rah. Oh, please. Uh, he partnered up with Grammy-nominated producer-engineer Damian Lewis, who's worked with Rihanna, Katy Perry, Beyonce. Two began writing songs together. Their first, uh, one of their first efforts, uh, Chemical, became Ryland's debut single, which received millions of YouTube views. He moved to L.A. in 2014. Thank you, Jesus! Uh, and has since worked with top <laughs> producers as Dallas Austin, who's worked with Michael Jackson, Madonna, Lady Gaga, and Justin Warfield, uh, who's worked with She Wants Revenge, Depeche Mode. He's performed multiple shows around the city. It was cast as uh, a warbler in the Final season of Glee, looking so cute in his little outfit and his little <laughs> hair. <laughs> hair gel. Uh, here to discuss his latest single, Love or Drugs, poking fun at the contradictions and the reality Love of it. La La Land. Amazing. Please welcome for the first time, Rylan. Amazing. Hey. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> The reason I'm so excited for this show is because, like I said, we, we love to bring people from all forms of entertainment. What we usually find by the end of the evening is that there's a certain through line that we all have, and that's obviously the passion of why we do this. It's not the easiest job in the world. There's a lot of obstacles. There's a lot of failure before you even have success. There's a lot of relationship issues, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's your lover, or you want to be lover. Um, but we still keep keep doing this mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk about the duality that we all kind of live and Ryland uh, as I was saying there's this duality your songs have a very upbeat kind of electro pop but when you look at the lyrics they're devastating um, oh, shit <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> shoot ten dollars for you um, but it's true um, you've studied professionally with with ballet and the structured you've had the structured um, uh, kind of education People thought you were a rebel as a kid and you got bullied when you were young because they're like, oh, who's this emo cloth wearing? The truth is you were a straight A student. You came home to your parents. You, st you played piano hours on end. Um, you're an introvert that appears like an extrovert in your videos. Is that true? That's actually very true, yeah. Um, and this, this latest song, Love or Drugs, really plays with that duality. And this is L.A. We've all been in the L.A. L.A. Mm -hmm. Everyone judges wherever. you right when they look at oh, you. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. And we've had well, this conversation. Well, that, that is awful. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we've had this conversation about, like, Instagram. We all put what we want. It's like nobody sees me like binge eating at Chick-fil-A, which is wrong for so many reasons. Oh, I relate uh, so much. I only go to Chick-fil-A on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. That's that a good answer. I literally... Oh. Oh, oh, even Kurt. Oh, there we go. Even though it was a Chick Fil A, but that's, a, that's but actually true, though. So, but you really address this duality that we've that we've all kind of experienced, and that's like, you know, what's our surface? Uh, who who loves you for the latest project, the last award you got, and and Gabrielle, you writing this book was a big kind of gamble because. We see you as the actress. Uh, recently, you've gone behind the camera to direct uh, with a really dramatic, emotional piece. Mm -hmm. I watched the film last night, by the way. Oh, nice. And then you write this book, which is so comedic, by the way. Yeah. And when you look at your body of work, you've had a little comedy here and there, but it's it's been a yeah. lot of uh, very odd horror to intimate dramas to really dramatic uh, issues. And then we have this kind of book. Yeah. Well, let's be, okay, there's yeah. a lot of drama in the book. I'm just naturally really funny, and people don't usually know that. <laughs> <laughs> so that came out in my writing, for sure. <laughs> but we see who you are because you don't keep anything back. We see you hooking up in, in Europe for, for different reasons. As well, you should. Thank you. Yeah. You sh if you're in Europe and you're single, or maybe can not I, single. Can I tell them about, like, just the gist of what it's about so we all know what we're talking yeah. about? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Um, so in 2017, I found out that my husband of almost two years was having an affair with a 19-year-old for six months. Nope. Yep. 
filed for divorce, left. Um, you guys, this guy had two phones, by the way. That's how like burner okay, it was. Oh, it was wow. intri- It was phone, really intricate. Yeah, it went Ugh. deep. A um, few weeks later, met a man, fell madly in love with each other. Uh, whirlwind of a romance, like meet my family. I, you know, want to have children with this woman. Blah blah blah. Um, and he was Latino, by the way. So we know. <laughs> and we know so, the bedroom was good. And so, dreamy. <laughs> look at how her uh, eyes yeah. roll back. She's I know. Like, I know. So like, uh, uh, you have to read some <laughs> of the chapters. <laughs> <laughs> you have to read some of these chapters yes. too, because my eyes were rolling back. I know. Oh, girl. I can't. <laughs> um, so he convinced me to join him on a month-long trip to Italy that he had booked. Uh, Forty-eight hours before we were supposed to get on a plane, he told me he had to go by himself. Oh no! I was oh. heart broken oh no and I was like well I can either stay at home and be heartbroken or I could go travel Europe for a month by myself so oh, I got on you. a plane with a backpack and no plans and did seven countries over a month wow. and wrote a book about it you're wow. my hero thank, thank you, you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay but here's also like because like I said I read this in in one in one day in one sitting you are also very honest that it wasn't like, oh, F him, I'm going to tour the world on my own. There was still this tug of war. Oh, with, yeah. Do I talk to him every time he messaged you? Do I still go see him? Which, you, which who knows? <laughs> you have to read the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away. Yeah, yeah no, no. Um, I can't wait to see the movie version well, of it. Wait, I just want to unpack this just a, a, yes. a little bit more. Oh, God, I love you, Jonathan. What, what, <laughs> what was the circumstance that he gave you that's, that, that was the excuse that yeah. you weren't going to go with him on this adventure? So he um, had lost a family member in his life uh, a year or so before. Okay. And when okay. he you know, fell in love with me, it brought up a lot of grief that he had stuffed down. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just really bad timing that it all came up was 48 that, hours before. Was that family mm-hmm. member a significant other? No. Oh, okay. No, it was like, it was his brother. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, um, so No, it is. And it, and I was very understanding You're and compassionate. To it. I, I've it dealt with a like, lot of grief in my life and, sure. um, and I saw how painful it was for him to make the decision. I get that. Um, yeah. But it but, really like I But it wasn't a breakup. It was more of a I can't. Oh do no this no no right it was a breakup. Oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. No no it was like you're my girlfriend. Never mind. I want to be your best friend. But like oh, you know, let's still like be at each other's lives all the time. Oh, yeah. That's gosh. very really? hard. Ooh. The whole yeah. I wanna still be your friend but yeah. also you need the separation yeah. but he had this yeah. duality though because you could say oh god typical male cop out and it was like you said there's there was more to that. Yeah. And you yeah. really made friends like with his family, like they became your yeah. family. But it really did. The second he told me, I knew that like everything was happening for a reason. Um, my biggest fear since I was a little girl is being okay by myself. And the universe was literally like, well, let's go face that head on right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Um, good, and it really changed my life. I what came a better home way to a do different that. person. What a better way to do that than somewhere that's not your home. Yeah. Yeah, like I agree. so oh, sure. far out of my comfort zone. That is yes. so cool. Because like I've traveled by myself before to go to like a film set to work, sure. but I've never been like, oh, let's put a backpack on my back and just go. You no, have no, no, no idea where but, you're going. <laughs> but <laughs> traveling solo is like, oh, it it will change your life. Is the best. Will change traveling your life. Solo. But so, I'm, but I'm talking about this duality because as an actress, you're taken very seriously. Um, but you reveal so much. Were you scared a little bit to reveal so much about your quirky self? Uh, your opinions on certain things and some of the fun that you had. Yeah. Were you scared at all? Because there's this, now we see, oh, who is this actress who who won these awards and yeah. directed this emotional piece? Yeah. Mm. Um, definitely. I mean, it's, I, I always am an open, no pun intended, an open book with, you know, my family and friends. Don't, Don't. skip to the back because it's steamy. <laughs> um, but I've never, on like on a larger level like this, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some fear of being judged and um, what will people think. But the amount of people that I think this book is going to help and help heal and help learn how to love themselves while having a very fun adventure doing it um, far outweighs that fear for me. And it's a very honest journey. Like I said, it's not just like I got over him and I had this amazing journey. It no, was a struggle. I wish. Time. So, I wish. So in terms of just because you're, you're obviously springboarding off of Eat, Pray, Love with the title yeah. and that kind of thing. What is the difference between these two journeys for in your mind? <laughs> um, well, I, um, I, I, revere, the, the cir- I revere both. I'm you know, curious, sure. You know. The circumstances were were different. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of happened to me, not mm-hmm. by choice. Right. Um, right. But I mean, I, you know, I smoked a joint in Amsterdam. I had a one night stand. I met a lot of different people. I made mm-hmm. some epic mistakes but this is and I learned a lot about sounds myself. Sounds like the best Euro vacation of my life. It was pretty epic. But isn't that, isn't that how you learn things is by your mistakes? 100%. Exactly. Right? I mean, and, and I think a lot of times people don't make mistakes and that's why they haven't learned maybe yeah. about but life. But they also don't experience passion and they don't reach a certain level. 
Well, people are afraid to step outside their comfort zone. Yeah. Right? Know. You know what I mean? People it's are afraid to fail. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah. Absolutely. Especially in this industry, because yeah. like I said, you're only good as your last success. Exactly. Yeah. And you're as bad as your worst and, and the, and failure. I think the problem that we we all kind of go through is that the cost of failure is very high for some of these yes. things. Mm -hmm. like it's extraordinarily mm -hmm. expensive to do what we do. So when you fail, there are consequences. And that's the nature of, of what we do, which is so risky. Yeah. Right. But, but at the same time, uh, you have to fail up. Like you have to get experience to get good at this. Mm -hmm. I like that term, fail, fail up. up. Fail up. That sounds really, really good. Really yeah. good. Yeah. You have yeah. to fail up. It's better than saying fake it or until you make it. Definitely. Correct. Yeah. I think right? there's a distinction. Yeah. Some Absolutely. people are just there's the fake part, and you're like, well, I see you. Right. Yeah, 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 Everyone yeah. sees it, but they yeah. don't for some reason. But right? there's, there's always that moments that like we have to go to a premiere or we have to do something. We're for like, sure. I don't want to be here. I can't even afford to be here. Blah blah blah. And mm -hmm. there's that you know, fake it till you make it. Right. But I f fail up. So let's talk about this. Do it because uh, we're opening this with uh, the talk about duality. Going from big studio projects where your films are in the top box office, you have studio heads, you have studio budgets, um, and then you kind of made the switch. What made the switch happen, which is very scary. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there's that duality of filmmaking. Yeah, no, my story is very circuitous. Um, and and it, it, to understand that turn, I have to go back a little bit, which is just when I grew up, I was a musical geek. I was a total musical like theater you nerd. you studied it. Like. God bless you. Yeah, yes. I did the ballet, jazz, tap, modern. Nice. Did, like, Were you piano. forced to do that or was that something you wanted to do? No. Uh, to go back even further, I grew up with dyslexia uh -huh. and oh. I had a really hard time learning how to read. And my mother, God bless her, she passed away. Um, she and my dad, uh, they, they picked up that I had rhythm. Hmm. And so they started me th with drum lessons when I was like six. Wow. And that was the beginning of my musical um, world and my confidence. So as I was, you know, bullied and made fun of for just being dumb, um, right. this was the this was the world that I kind of understood, and that 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 kind of led to this crazy journey. <laughs> I get emotional, where I was really I was just living and breathing and going to go to Broadway. That was yeah. my dream. Oh yeah, yeah. totally. And sure. um, and uh, I had I had all these aspirations, and you know went to a great school for it and all this kind of stuff. But then my mom died suddenly, and I was uh, just I was so hit by that. I was just kind of like, wow, I can't believe I'm doing something so f frivolous mm -hmm. as sing. It, it just was one of these things where right. like, I couldn't make a noise, um, and so I I stopped for like five years, and I still didn't know what to do with my life. I went into religion and philosophy and psychology for school, and I went to New York, and I was just like lost. And I got a job on Wall Street to make money because we were from the Midwest, we didn't have money. Right. I was just like, you well, know, if my, you're gonna get a job to make money, <laughs> well, might just, as well be Wall Street. Sell your soul, yeah. go to Wall Street. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it wasn't a great, it wasn't a big job, but it was enough to give me some stability. Right. And so to kind of make, uh, kind of talking about duality, yeah. I would take the little money I made and I would put up these one act plays at night. Mm. And that was my sort of, I'll stay on the business side and I'll just, you know, direct or produce these plays. Long story short, my uncle, Tom Carpenter, God, you know, he is quite well and he's an amazing individual. Um, uh, he actually gave me some advice and he says, listen, if you take this next promotion, you will be making so much money at 22 that you will never turn back. Mm. You have to follow uh, your dreams. Oh, right, true. follow your heart. And so I did, I answered an ad in the New York Times to be a Broadway producer's assistant, and that was the famous Jimmy Niederlander. Hmm. Wow. And that was the beginning of- Just a small- Strange- Just strange. a small uh, wow. job. Yeah, just a small I, town I girl living yeah. in a lonely <laughs> world. Very, uh, very <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the irony there, and I tell my students all the time, is it's like, the only reason I got that job was because I had musical theater, and I had numbers mm -hmm. on my resume. I needed to know a little bit about the business. Knowing about the business in, th in this industry is almost as important as having the skill. Yeah. Like it really is. Yeah, very, yeah. It, it is, sure. it's, it's part of the marriage. Your and story yeah. is like a prime example of everything happens for a reason. Like the universe directed oh, you to I each love of that those. Saying. Let me tell you. But you have to make it happen too though. I know a lot yeah. of people that come to LA, they spend two years and I'm like, oh, I couldn't make it. I'm like, you never oh, no, did. No, 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 yeah. No. You gotta get out. You gotta, no. you gotta hustle, right. you have to work. You have yeah. to You have to network, you have to send But then again, remember some of those people though, and that's the thing I was trying to think in the positive but they they don't know maybe what they want so it's like just they think of what you want passion. and go do it yeah. Yeah. passion right. well that's what's interesting just to like totally random but all of us in here we're all doing something we really like mm -hmm. i'm very fortunate i'm very blessed that way it's true i'm yeah. a very happy person because i've actually just 
never given up on the fact that I needed to stay true to myself. There, yeah. have been, there have been times where I went off track. We all do, and, that's and we part will. Of the nature of the kind of oh, and sometimes you have to pay bills. And that was one of the reasons I was at Sony. I was you know working on these big projects, yeah. and I was behind a desk, and I was like. I'm a singing and dancing idiot. Like, what is happening? Nobody knew. Nobody knew about my background. Nobody knew that I was a musical theater nerd. And I was like, this is just not me. So I hmm. jumped ship. I went and made this crazy musical with Sony's help. God bless them. And uh, that was the beginning of me taking on this next journey, which yeah. includes all these other artists and all these other people that I collaborate with, which is where the producing comes from, where the, all the, the stuff comes from. Being completely independent for 12 years, I can say I'm a success story now, you know, but it's a 25 year path mm -hmm. to just not give up. And right. I that's say like, it's like, listen, just don't give up. That's a real success story because you, you hear a lot about, I mean, especially in music, people who, sounds awful, but it's true, get the jobs because they were there, not necessarily because they actually studied what there is But that's a PR spin because it. that yeah. that you, literally I, is yeah. not happening, but that's what we're told because it's a glamorous Cinderella oh, of story. Course, of course. Lady Correct. Gaga used to perform Correct. at the corner of Trunks Correct. in West Hollywood. Yes, Correct. I know. She did Hear Lounge on a on a coffee table, Correct. which is why I'm like, but she I was singing on a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> but Correct. she was singing acoustic versions of her song and she wasn't getting anywhere. And yeah. she wasn't Lady Gaga, so the way she looked was not what was acceptable Correct. Correct. until somebody said, hey, let's make your songs into Correct. pop and electronic and a little mm -hmm. bit, of, bit of that. But from yeah. a creative standpoint, that's actually really inspiring that you actually achieved at least just to be in the room with the business people and the producers, if you will, quote unquote. Well, you think because you come from the creative so, aspect of it. I never talk about this, but just because you brought it up and I appreciate you for saying it, I'll say this. I think I, I think I stuck in those jobs so long because I was so teased as a kid that mm. there was something deep inside of me that said, you can f you can do this. Yeah. And I, I mean, I remember my first days at the studio and I had some really brilliant bosses but it was a it was a crazy environment. I I was, you know, walking out of the crying, just like, oh my god, this is really tough. And it was because it was this was the hardest thing I could have done, because you know, singing and dancing was kind of fun and natural. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like that yeah. was like swim, fishing in water, like you yeah. know, whatever. But that was the that was the test. And the second I got promoted, I was like, what am I doing? Right. Uh, I gotta get the hell out of here. This is insanity. I gotta go. And that was what happened to me. And that was what that that moment was all about. And so you wonder who's in these top jobs that had a passion for something else, and they're sitting they're here. Oh, I'll, they're I'll tell you. So like, they're, they're like, they're why all, was this? Yeah. They're all, yeah. So we're all like that. We're all closeted, like you know, actors, singers, dancers who are just like who just got on this other lane, and then that's so interesting. And then yeah. you're making real money, and you've got a family, and you've got a whatever, and and you got like things to do, and you're like the risk, the you know, the things that it's are risky. crazy. Yeah. You're risk averse because of all the responsibilities that you might have. And I, I just look at it like, okay, that that's that's that path. I was fortunate at the time. I I, I you know, while I had romances and failed and, and succeeded and failed and succeeded, and that's still the pattern. It, it was always sort of. <laughs> <laughs> that's the story of life, though. It, it, it was, yeah, it was always that sort of like. That literally is what you, what should happen. But I do believe that for for particularly a guy in musical theater who's straight, there's something about oh, that. Oh God, you were very popular. Wacky. Yeah, you're like no, a no, unicorn. No, no, no. The I, boys and girls were like, no, no, no. Jonathan's I, here. I swear to God, that's <laughs> not true. But but there's something about that. I will tell everybody, and, and for all you listening out there, whatever you do, I think you got to put your yourself and your passion first before you decide to have a relationship with somebody else. Always. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. so fundamentally important that I can tell you like. This is this is the nature of things. Figure your shit out first. Yeah. And then you can be in a healthy relationship. But we also know that love doesn't make us think sure. logically. It never. doesn't let us I make it. the wise choices. I, I, I think you that's said what, that every single That's what art's all about. That's what art yeah. is all about. And it kind of un unfortunately it gives us material and it feeds into what we're writing, it feeds into what we're singing, it feeds into what stories we want to see. It's true. Even if the story has nothing to do with, with a love relationship, it's that same passion, and it's basically relationships on every single level, w level whether it's your parents, whether it's your it's neighbor, true. whether it's, it's everything. True. And I think you're on record saying that every single relationship you've had, which is kind of the impetus for your latest single, every relationship you had has been a user. Oh, totally. Mm. Um, Girl, boy, dog, vegetable, everything. Sort of Sheep, yeah. lamb. Oh, God, now the Republicans are going to love what you just said to be like, see? <laughs> Thank you very He's much. He's open to everything. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, Please weird, tell me right? at least it was a no. sexy iguana and no. not some like goldfish. Oh, thank you so much for saying iguana because that's my favorite animal. Do you mean, like, do you mean when you say usually that they were a taker instead of a giver? Yes, okay, that it. kind of a thing. I mean, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I don't know why it is intrinsically in me, but I feel love when I give, it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. And when someone for accepts sure. me giving, if that makes sense. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, when I moved here, I was uh, 19. I just turned 19. I moved here alone. Um, I lived alone, and I just had to wow. try to find friends, if wow. that makes sense. Totally. So I didn't friends in L.A., please. I know, and what's 19, that? And yeah. in 19, yeah. Yeah. I what do you have do a, where I, you go? I didn't have right? a fake ID. I didn't right. have anything, so I just had That's to That's probably the of, best thing for you, by the way. God if bless you. Would have gotten Thank you. involved in West Hollywood oh, at sure. 19, yeah. you, oh, no, you wouldn't be sitting no. here right now. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of avoid West Hollywood with – Unless my friends want to go there, if that makes sense. But I, I've, I'll be like, I'll go on a Tuesday night at eight o'clock. How's that? Yeah. Um, well, no, because you're listening to the show, so not yeah, a exactly. Tuesday night. But yeah. No, not Tuesday. <laughs> like I mean, another. I'm here, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. afterwards, yeah. if you want to buy me a drink or it's seven, that'd be great. Um, uh -oh. But uh, well, this there is danger, is. by the way. Because yeah. we'll sit down and be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but no, that's what it kind of what it was. Yeah. Is that I met the people that I didn't realize were. The users, if that right, makes sense, right, it was right, the people at the parties, the bad parties that you go to, if that makes sense. Not the, all parties are good. And no, not all well, are... I mean, when we talked earlier, I mean, I, it's it. I think of a party as an experience, like something that you would actually not see normally, which is why you're going there. So, like, that's something that you do, which is very interesting. But there are parties, quote unquote, if you will, where people go to be seen and mm -hmm. go to be seen with people who are seen already, if that or makes sense. Or to have an audition. Yeah, exactly. So uh, those Alternative are the people that I met yep. when I first came here. Right. So sure. that was, sure. I mean, any relationship because I had. Because they're everywhere in LA. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, yeah, especially in acting. The, but, but even with the close relationships, like you said, you kept giving and giving. And what I, in this book, in your journey, when you still kept referring back to this person, yeah. it was just a give, give, give. And when we need to be loved so much, I think we give because we think it's going to come back eventually. Mm -hmm. When's that? When's that <laughs> timeline? This is this is something I, 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 <laughs> we're all. It's like silence. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a very interesting subject to me because I just finished reading a book on codependence, and my last relationship was apparently very codependent. And it was just a give sort of like imbalance situation. I didn't really know the, what the term codependence really was. I was like somebody that, well, it sounds like a very codependent relationship. I was like, fucking codependent, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's and different and levels of it that we don't understand. Like there's different was, levels of addiction. Yes. Yep. And, 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 and there was this moment I was like, I'm going to look this up. And so I got this book. I was like, well, I, I, I definitely what check. What time to read, by the way? I you keep talking about these books. I'm like, what I the know. hell do you read? I know. Audio books. When he's not sleeping. Audiobooks, I, they're the key. Anyway, uh, so, but I, I you know, of, of the, you know, of the 15 things that, you know, qualify a codependent relationship, there was sort of like, okay, I'm definitely checking a few of these boxes. I get it. Like, this has actually been very helpful for me. But I think it has to do with, like, it being empathic or being helpful oh, yeah. or being yeah. caring or whatever. And, and, and the basic definition is that there's just an imbalance. Like, mm -hmm. you're giving more than you're getting receiving. And then you feel bad for asking that you should That's have something. I'm like, thing. I would like to have this, but, like, no, you feel weird like that. Nah, oh, and I don't know if there's really a timeline on it. I think everything, every situation is different. Um, you know, when I found out my ex-husband was cheating, there was no timeline there. It was like, okay, bye bye. Well, um, he done and you then wrong. It was literally. I mean, that, yeah. honestly, that seems like a very smart decision That's on yeah. your part. Oh no, it was the to best be decision like, I've ever made. I don't want to investigate. Just like this is wrong. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a deal breaker. Yeah, one hundred percent. And but then with the guy after, obviously, you know, that was a lot longer of a situation because I cared so much Your and wanted right. to take care of him right, in so right. many ways. Of so course. I right. think it's different for every situation and every relationship. Totally. Every, every I, I do believe I agree. Every relationship is completely unique. That's for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I think as artists, we just try to. I mean, honestly, why we do art. Oh, God, this gets so like very. Where's the music? I know, right? <laughs> Let's go. Behind the music. Let's go. Um, it's the American Idol audition. Whenever you hear the piano, you're like, oh, God, oh, your dog had uh, one leg. Or, and you're, like, <laughs> my dog does have one eye, so that, I mean, maybe That's I should audition sexy. for American oh. Idol. Yep. Um, yeah, it's or like be a pirate. Madonna's next. Um, I, thank yeah. you. I tried to find oh an eye patch. God. They're very hard, hard to find for a dog. Anyway, <laughs> but like as an artist, what you're doing is basically finding connection and it's not necessarily looking for validation it's just putting out what's out there for someone to say i get this even if it's one person that's right. yeah so that's right. i i mean that's very it, it's almost a profound I, I, thing I, if you will I, 
I, I agree. I think it's interesting that as artists, we have this responsibility built into us where we have to sort of absorb experience and interpret and then provide some message or something like, mm -hmm. hey, I, I went through this. You want to share your experience. What do you, what do you think? This yeah. is what I came out learning. I hope, I, and I say this sometimes about my, my follies and my biggest mistakes in life to my students. I'm like, listen, I'm here because I'm going to tell you all these awesome things that I did that were total disasters. And I, my, my whole point in being here is to tell you these things in such detail that you will absolutely not make the same mistakes that I made. That will be the only thing that brings some value to the fact that this was a total crash and yeah. burn. If you were my, my college 20s. professor, I probably would have stayed in college. So, <laughs> uh, nice. Which might have, but might have been everyone the best is thing very for you. Well, you know, interesting. It's, it's yeah. important to give back and to pass it on these lessons that we got. I'm going to read your book. Oh, so oh, because so I think sweet. it's that's the whole point. Yeah, I, right. that's, that's really why I wrote it, because I wanted people to learn from all the stuff that I went through. Absolutely. And, and it has the fun stories, but then there's like bullet points. It's like, this is exactly why I'm thinking this. This is why I'm doing this. And then, cool. like, the thinking on it, like, yeah. Yeah, inside um, monologue. And I just want to stress, all of us have talked about music from your choreography yeah. and it being such an early part of, like, your dancing career. Yeah. Obviously music, obviously music, obviously music. Yeah. And it's, like you said, drumming was used to, to kind of provide a rhythm of life we are being so like we're you know what you know what though here's yeah. the thing here's the thing i think music Emmy. music is very uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, universal language. it's literally everyone no matter what language you speak universal. even it, you you have um um everything behind music yeah I'll, I'll tell you this interesting story so when i dj'd um uh, when i dj'd at disney some years ago uh there was a girl that came up to me um she came up to me later but she wrote me an email and I was there every Saturday night. Like I was DJing every Saturday night. And for me, it's like you come up, you do it, you yep. show up, you see mm -hmm. the same people, and you see um, you know, like the annual pass holders, the ones that are literally there, like you know, seven days a week. All do of you, my do you have a job, right? <laughs> yeah. But what's interesting? They usually have is, a job at Disney. But by the everyone, way. <laughs> everyone has a story behind. And this one girl wrote me, and she was very um, depressed with her life, mm. and su su suicidal. Mm -hmm. And she came up to me and she said, your music, and she'd never heard EDM music, you know, electronic dance music. Ooh, and about seven, eight years ago, um, it, you know, that's when like it, it was huge and massive. And she came up to me about a year later and I was like, oh, I always see you here. And she says, yeah, you changed my life. And, mm -hmm. and, it, oh my and I don't wreck, you know, I don't, you know, you don't realize it. You, you know, you don't realize never you, know. Pe all of us, everyone changes people's lives yeah. and you never know. And she says, you know, you turned me on to electronic dance music. Um, I literally didn't know what to do with my life. My parents, this and that, and all this went in. But I came here every Saturday night because you got me away from the world wow, and your awesome. music changed it. It was so really neat. Yeah. But when you think about it, you're like, whoa, you know, like you, you kind of carry this, but you don't really know but what you're, you're touching. you're sharing that story. Right, like, right. Uh, like you're like, Every project that you guys do is a story that's out there that people will read in so many different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and talking about music, uh, you were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. And you were displaced from your whole growing up in wow. New Orleans. Mm. And that's kind of where your relationship with music kind of actually bonded in your actual music that oh, totally. you liked and not what you were totally. just taught. I mean, uh, my entire family, the entire family, my mom's side, my dad's side, everyone lives in Louisiana, and mm -hmm. pretty much everyone lives in New Orleans, like wow. direct wow. center. Proper. So wow. it's very, and, and, and I mean, New Orleans is a quirky city, so it's not very traditional white picket fence, but there will be like a white picket fence with, you know, pink polka dots, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, mm -hmm. that's the structure. So then me wanting to do that, you know, and, and abandon all of that and be like, I, d I don't want a fence at all. I don't right. even want a home. Like, I just want music. Mm -hmm. um, going, I mean, I was I was super young. I think I was 10 years old. But, like, during Hurricane Katrina, just getting away from that and realizing that there's somewhere else that's not where my family is mm -hmm. constantly and that isn't that pressure of having to, you know, do the whole high school, college, right. get married, Th have there, children, there get a other dog. Roads. Other yeah, roads. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. to to so many other roads. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I think that, that actually, you know, kind of uh, – gave me the oomph, if you will, to do what I wanted to do. And that's really interesting that you talked about that girl at um, your show, because that is, I think, why I haven't abandoned, quote unquote, if you will, my dark side in, in, in terms of writing pop music, because pop is, I mean, pop is changing all the time. So basically what's always changing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what you do is, you know, I think you incorporate 
Yes, I, you know? I, I just I, I yeah. always have related to like the pop artists who have like kind of made their own world within right. the world. So mm-hmm. like the right. Bowies, the Prince, the Madonnas, right. the Gagas, that kind of a thing. So there are a lot of people who have reached out to me on social media, which is like probably my favorite part of social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where people actually say like. I feel this way or I have done this before mm-hmm. and I don't want to do it again. Mm-hmm. That kind of a situation. So yeah. it mm-hmm. makes me feel like I'm actually doing something that's reaching, you know, people, actual humans yeah. as opposed to just uh, an idea. I think it's critical. I think there's this sort of differentiation that we all make, which is you're either going to be helpful or you're not. And yeah. I think there's just something about creating anything where you can really t- you can really find the line. Yeah. And I think once you start to be helpful, you do start to feel like the market does respond in a certain way that the universe opens up to you. And I yeah, think no, that totally. begets itself. And then suddenly you're on this ongoing weight of- Yeah, of I mean, I'd, like, stuff, I'd rather reach real people sure. that I know than- It's, a pa- it's, a, it's passion projects. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, right. so. and I find it's a multiplier too, yeah. where that person leads to somebody else. No, it's exponential. Person, yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. Mm-hmm. How did that change? Your approach to the sets that you were playing after, I mean, that's that's pretty heavy. Probably. I played Feelings. <laughs> 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 or In the Arms of an Angel. No. Nice. Come on, Sarah McLaughlin. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it actually made me, like, really think about, like, looking at the audience. Like, looking out at the people dancing. Because, yeah, there's these people out there. And you don't know their story. You don't know their background. You know what's going on in their life. And I think that's what's so neat about music and entertainment is we are able, that's why I love doing my hypnosis shows, people for a brief moment step out of their life mm. and step into this fantasy of watching a movie, of watching a show, of, of you know, what listening to song. I mean, Even it's reading like, a book. Like, it reading, ah. yeah, hey. exactly. It, yeah. It's like they, it goes away from what their reality is and you can kind of like, you know, take them to another place that yeah. w- there's no worries. And at the same time, some of us, you know, can provide some a little bit of uh, advice, mm-hmm. I guess you could say, mm-hmm. of like, here's our experience, you know, take it as for what it is. And, 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 and I think also part of that advice is we're the same. It's like, I, yeah. I've, I've been through that too, or, or we're very close by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not yeah. that big of a difference. You're like you me. Yeah, yeah, I like, exactly. yeah, I'm right. like you. Mm-hmm. Like, like you. We're not like that different. Me. Exactly. Everyone yeah. always thinks so, like, you know, these movie stars and celebrities they're so different but they're they're really not they have oh, yeah. they have the same oh it's crazy i couldn't agree more that yeah. was one of the most profound things about experiencing what i did when i because I, I i moved after 9 11 because that was absolutely tragic and then was like i got to rebuild my life and i got this interesting opportunity and found, found myself within a year working with you know just about everybody who is everybody and on the a-list side knows it's like I was struck by two things. Number one, that these really, really interesting people were pretty normal. And that number two, it took an army of 5,000 people working hard. It's not just one person. And so much money to make it look Mm -hmm. the way it did. And it was this big, not a a bad illusion. You know what I mean? Because there's something about that that creates its own thing. But but I think what happens with Hollywood is that people don't really realize how much effort it takes to create what it is that's created. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and then at the same time, there's this just uh, disassociation with with the sense of true, oh, totally. down to earth, like this person is perfectly normal, they have problems too. It's like mm-hmm. bless everybody. people you know? don't realize that there's actually heart behind a project, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, it, it goes through so many different filters and so many different levels, Correct. But but where it comes from, the writing, the acting, right. yeah. the well, directing. This is what's so yeah. neat about social yeah. media versus you know years ago when we didn't have it is now you're starting to see these artists. You get to see behind the scenes of their life. And well, what they is, choose to show you. See, well, that's, that's exactly, not, and that's what is, your latest Not always. Is. No, but you're not no, wrong. not always. You're not, not wrong always. because like the purpose of social media, I, and, I mean from like an artist's point of view, is yeah. that you should share what art is like. Yeah. It's not, it's not what the finished product is because the finished product is you know, perfection, quote unquote. If right. it's what you want to share, it's what probably, you know, 50 to 5,000 people want to share. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you can actually open yourself up and say, this is the starting process, like mm-hmm. this is the beginning of the idea, mm-hmm. you will see better. so much more vulnerability and, and not, not just vulnerability, but like an actual human yeah. creating this, which is... Absolutely. Which to me is the, the, the thing that has always inspired me to... 
like anything artistic, be it a musician, a film, um, a book, art. A, yeah, art. Just you yeah. see yeah. art, art. You know, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. someone took the time to make that you know round piece of clay on the ground. Yeah, right. yeah. I think that I think what it, what it presents to me is just that there's just so many more opportunities now on so many more levels to be creative. Mm -hmm. Sure. You can be up there or you can be over here and it's it's really just an open playing field now. And I also think that in terms of just what's happening globally, that this is the moment of great awakening, that this entire wave of technology and people interacting across borders that we've never seen before. Right. I mean, That's I grew true. up in a world, I mean, I grew up in a world where we were afraid of the Russians because there were nuclear warheads pointing at each other. I was just like, this is an entirely different world. My mm -hmm. business partner was just a fabulous person who's from Russia. I right. mean, look yeah. at that, look at where, right. where, where right. we've come in 20 some odd years it's it strikes me every completely day completely different yeah and, and 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 the globalization is is fascinating to me and i think social media is right is that's the arrow pointing us at be puncturing that in so many interesting ways because of singers who are able to communicate culturally across these these obstacles that we all know of you know it's just yeah well you know, look at I youtube mean, putting out your songs and stuff it's incredible. And yeah. it's right How, would you and, ever g given um something like that a platform and, to do that and yeah millions of people are looking at this i mean that's extraordinary reach that's honestly the the, the thing that makes it worthwhile and makes me oh, the most happy oh, is to reach somebody who i could never reach before right. i mean absolutely. i have what I I'm very weird about saying fans like I'm I, I don't me like too. that yeah I don't yeah, like that term don't be so well thank you but it doesn't mean you have an ego every one of us literally has fans well thank you there, my mom has fans there's a there's a guy <laughs> who's a, a, a <laughs> transgender family. kid in Germany in Berlin mm -hmm. uh, no sorry not Berlin sorry Germany and um he related to like the first song I ever released That's and awesome. he's been there forever and he's one of I feel like he's one of my best friends now if that makes sense yeah oh, we've great related on so many different issues and, and we don't even speak the same language. Well, and so I have to tell sense. you, Ryland, when I go into like a meeting or when I go to like a big LGBT event and I'm not wearing the, the smallest waist, whatever, right? I just no money talk and it's like, you oh, know. Oh, thanks. No, but literally it's like, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Okay, we're going to do a little bit, a rapid fire, and then we're going to focus on the industry part of this. This mm. really has been like. I know, we got really we deep. We got deep. Yeah. 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 Sorry. But you know what? I'm, I'm blaming you. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm no, no. sorry. No, it's a good thing, but I'm blaming you. Thing. You're just way too educated for yeah, us. Sorry for that. <laughs> a uh, huge part of our audience <laughs> are from the entertainment community, whether they're just starting, okay. whether they've done projects, and we need to have these conversations with each other. Good. Where else in the world would we have all sat down and had this right. conversation? Thank you. Very right? True. Very Thank true. You. Well, I'm not saying, oh, yes, for the show. But I'm saying is that entertainers need to have these honest conversations. What's going on with you? What do you need? What have you been through? How can I learn from your uh, experience? Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a rapid fire. Then we're going to talk about industry. Uh, these them. always make me nervous. What is rapid fire? I'm nervous. Th this you is just, just general. Just very stream of yeah, consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Faulknerian. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm ready. Uh, Jonathan, what would your drag name be? Oh, uh, Glitter Boy. Stop. Oh, Glitter Boy. <laughs> that came a little too fast, wow. by the way. Didn't yeah. you yeah. think that? It never okay. comes too fast. Uh, hey. Describe your ex using a movie title. Oh. Which ex? Oh, Javier. <laughs> Javier. Oh, my God. Um, Interesting. Or just name a movie he was in. <laughs> uh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, I've been trying to figure out who this is. Oh, my God. Is. I don't know. What is like a like crazy Latin love affair Shops with movie. a fist? I don't know. Stop. What? <laughs> I just, I can't pull up a movie that would be... <laughs> yeah, but but like that describes him. Or like Deep Impact. Like just like... Deep <laughs> Impact. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Oh Wait. my God, I didn't mean that in a sexual way. I meant it in like a blowing Ooh. up my life, you guys. Wow. Okay, uh, glad Deep to know Deep Impact where... starts on page 220. <laughs> 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 glad to know where, <laughs> glad to know where everybody's mind is right now. That was fantastic. Oh, I walked right into that one. Okay. And I'm just going to be over here drinking my drink. Moving on. <laughs> Deep in the <laughs> All of a sudden, Please. everyone heads down. Uh, we did get the question from the chat room. What's going to be the title of your next novel? Oh, that's nice. Oh my God! Already? Yeah, yeah, girl. That's I'm always. Sign. I'm That's like, okay, because we binge watch shows now. We're like, oh, yeah, I have season two yeah. to watch now. I'm like, she's like, in demand. Um, if I do <laughs> the, if I do the second one, um, it will be called the um, the ridiculous. No, my God, I can't even say it now, guys. I'm Dude, having too much it, vodka. Say it <laughs> Deep <out> impact. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the ridiculous misadventures in the life of a single girl. Oh, okay. That's great. Wonderful, wonderful. Very Make short, adventures. very succinct. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yes. Celebrity you'd go straight for? 
Uh, celebrity, I would go straight for. Oh gosh, um, oh, <laughs> man. Oh, I don't know. I would say probably B. Arthur. <laughs> We have the most ridiculous answers. Yeah, this is why I amazing. hate rapid fire. Amazing. <laughs> I, can't. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I love it. No comment. Jumping space it. time oh, awesome. as we go. I just yeah. love the Golden Girls. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, God, you're just like my, my best friend. And he was all about I me. am your best friend. I love that about you. <laughs> it's great. Weirdest fan request ever. Oh, God. My um, goodness. Can you... Oh, okay. So <laughs> it was, can you send me um, a shirt and a sign poster and I said of course so then I normal <laughs> easy so then I said yeah. um, yes but my uh, manager is gonna send it to you so then went I was like here's the at and this was all over Instagram DM mm -hmm. so like very casual so I was like okay just go to my managers and so he responded he was like can I please get your address and she uh. said F off weirdo and I was like, no, 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 he's not, he's not a creeper. Like it, 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 uh, he, it, and she was like, yeah, right. And then I had to message her and be like, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm trying to be nice. I'm so sorry. Anyway, point being, she responds on every single one of my photos 12 times. So. 12, not 13. 12. No, 12. Oh, that's weird. She Why? She doesn't want to be unlucky. I need to know everything. Why 12? Why? That, that may be it. Maybe. I mean, I Literally. love the number 13, but it is, it is, it is 12. It's, so it's the average or it's exact 12. Um, it's probably the average okay. because today I got seven, Good. but oh, okay. I, I should probably okay. check after I was this. Wondering oh, if it was right. But it usually is around 12. They're going to have plenty yeah. to say. Um, so mm. I'm going to talk about going from in front of the camera, behind the camera. Mm. And Gabby, I want to talk about um, it happened again last night. Yeah. You know, it was your first kind of step into the directorial world. Yes. Um, and then you're a huge part of it. Yeah. And I love that you kept a short film, a short film, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it literally was a short <laughs> film. Um, and it went through such an arc. Hmm. And Jonathan, I would talk about you because in your directorial debut, yeah. you also bounced in front, behind the camera. Yes. There has to be a different approach. If you're going to be the best actor you can in a project, there has to be a different creative approach than when you're in front of the camera. And I want to know that energy and that, and how did you deal with that kind of duality since we're talking about dualities? Good question. Do you want to? Talk? Um, so for me, it was a lot of preparation um, and knowing e exactly what I was going to do. I also, on It Happened Again last night, I had a co director, yeah. which saved me because on my first project to be starring in it and mm -hmm. directing and producing was just ridiculous. I was actually going to, that's very interesting because I was thinking about that the other day about how. Someone directs themselves mm -hmm. in yeah. a movie. Do you yeah, yeah, have yeah. to have yeah. like somebody else to backboard off um, of? You don't have to. If you have a lot of time and money, which on indie sets do we ever, um, uh, then it's it's a lot easier. But to be on a really tight schedule and you guys filmed budget, in two days, two days, yeah. Um, oh my god, wow! And it was like a really emotional role for right. me as an actress. It was about a woman who is stuck in an abusive relationship with a man who has fallen in love with her best friend, who's a female. Do you mind if we Whoa. take a uh, oh no, please, take, uh, Kurt, if you will? Oh great. Gabby Stone and oh, cool. it happened again last night. Oh, this is fun. Her directorial debut, um, as oh, well cool. as this is a festival award winning performance. Oh, exciting. I'm going to work. things and get out of here. Okay. We have to hurry. No, you can buy new yeah. shit. Okay. Sage. Oh my god, that's okay. He's going to hurt me. It's okay. No, it's not. Okay, he's going to hurt me. What are you doing? 
I heard you coming. I just wanted to come talk to you. Where is he? Stephen, there's no one here. Are you lying to me? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to end it here because I don't want to give away the, the whole uh, <laughs> film. Just a little so, light. Yeah, lighthearted. Light, oh, light comedy yeah, right? for you. <laughs> and there's, there's a beautiful uh, prologue to it where, where we see a character in the past. We see mm -hmm. some of the relationship building. So to do this, and like we said, how to see it from behind the camera and also be objective with yourself because you're not just doing like, okay, let's do comedy. I know I'm funny on camera, so yeah. next scene. You have to be so um, honest with yourself as an actress. Mm -hmm. Also have to serve the piece that if it's not working, it's not working. Yeah. I think the hardest thing for me was being in a scene with someone as an actress wanting to not judge them obviously and give and take um, but then having my directing brain being like oh no we need to adjust something that they just did mm -hmm. and then feeling the awkwardness of having to tell them that because as an actress you're like oh so were you not even in this with me like yeah. I was wow. so it was a really interesting yep. Yep. Um, balance and Alex Lynn Ward who played my girlfriend in that um, and I go way back and are very good friends so to do that with someone then you you know really well right. it was a very interesting right. situation. And she's a funny girl right? Yeah she's hysterical. She's like a YouTube yeah. uh, funny girl. Yeah you should check her out she's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting I, I, I one of the things that I was going to say about that which was it, powerful because uh, when I when I do flip around it's usually for satire and comedy I won't go where you went because it's very, very special territory. Yeah. Um, and whenever I've done the sort of flip and go front and back, uh, camera-wise, I've I've relied on making sure that I had some people that I've worked with in the past who I really trusted. Yeah. Who would be my own bullshit meter. Yes. And be like, okay, this is the most talented actor that I know. Mm -hmm. That's going to be like my ghost. Yeah. For and sure. then they will just sit there and say, okay, that sucked. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> Thank you for being here Great. because Let's everybody else is afraid because you're the director or yeah. you're whatever. So they're very like under you. And yeah. I'm like, no, no, I need somebody who's going to literally be eviscerating me yeah. to my face. 100%. And, and there's some integrity that there. That still builds you up, though, because you're in a very naked position. You're That's being crazy. naked yeah, it's nuts. behind the camera because everyone's like, Oay every literally everybody's looking at you like, OK, what, what, what now? Yeah. Yeah. It's a really behind interesting the camera, thing. but in yeah. front. Yeah. It's yeah. A really interesting thing. Um, and your film. Uh, is is such a different energy from the big films that you've been working on? Yeah. Some of the big projects you have coming up, which <laughs> have a lot of heft to them. Yes. Not this that this doesn't. Yes. Yes. This is an entirely different sort of lane on my highway. Yeah. 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 Um, if we can just take a, a, a peek at, at some of the trailer, just to give you guys a, oh, yeah, a, a feel of the energy, because yes. I'm like, wait, this is John Baker? <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Just stay focused. Dude. It's Armageddon. Are you getting me this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Halloween was the end of the world as we know it. Well, in that case, we really better go home. Huh? We may not be in the same dimension anymore. Do you not see that guy following us? And here's where it gets interesting. We have to answer the greatest question in human history. It's the God particle itself. Time is an illusion. The multiverse itself is entangled. We have to undo the damage of the apocalypse. No, 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 oh God, oh God. God. You clearly won't get this. Educate me. Okay. Okay, so that's just a little peek at the movie. This has such a unique, and it's such uh, an homage and a spoof it from is. the very first frame oh, good. of, of oh, so good. many different genres, from weird science good. to Star Wars, good. to yes. Ferris Bueller's Day good. Off, to Back thank to the Future. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, that's right. It's kind of a, a, a turn for you, and for this to be like your big debut. Yeah, yeah. This is an interesting movie only because for me, creatively, like I've been wanting to direct since high school, and I think I think we can all appreciate how long these kind of opportunities take to show up in life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've I had directed many times in theater and all sorts of crazy, stupid stuff. 
Um, but then getting into the professional world, having an opportunity to direct something is sort of like the glass ceiling. And I spent a lot of my time trying to figure out what and how to, to, to get the capital to do something. And in this instance, um, there was an opportunity to create something around uh, these two characters. And uh, I knew them both very well. And I was inspired by, you know, their sort of like their personalities to that extent. And the natural ingredients came together that kind of blended with my natural taste. And I'm a Mel Brooks fan. Yeah, I'm a tell John Hughes mm -hmm. fan. Mm -hmm. I love the Matrix. I saw so many feels of Ferris the Bueller's back, Day Off. In it, yeah, there's the there's Back to the Future in this. That's it's a it's a genre blend. Yep. And I wanted and I and I told my my collaborators at the time the, these poor kids that I put through this. I said, listen, if we're gonna get an opportunity to do this, and these guys are on screen, it's a three hander. Yep. There are only three goddamn people in mm -hmm. the entire movie. Um, I we the, if and, and we don't have a lot of money. I was like, look. This is we're going to back into this, and to me it was more of a, a, an exercise in just kind of figuring out what you can do with mm -hmm. the budget, and how you could still make it funny and entertaining. And that cr that pressure created this movie. And I can only tell you that over the course of learning so many lessons about it, that it is this thing that I said, look, if we're going to do this, we have to do something that nobody's ever seen before. That's the only ingredient to me is that we do something that nobody's ever tried to do. And that was this genre blend. And so when we when I, I wrote the music for it and was just like, I need the music to tell people what we're referencing. So it goes musically from genre to genre to genre to genre. And if you pay attention to the music, the score, you actually get what it's riffing on immediately. I got it. And Immediately. That's great. I appreciate my, you so yeah, much. Yeah. You're my best friend all of a sudden. Uh, Thank you so much. Very music minded. And Thank it's like, so oh, this, yeah. this, 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 this. Yeah, and you're good, like, good, okay, good. this is what this is. And it's stupid yeah. and it's absurdist because the science of quantum mechanics is illogical. It actually cuts to the very notion of our logic and says, we are a biological construct of time and that's our consciousness. And if you look into the deep physics of it, that's not real. Right. And that is the center of our art because we're time. We're all about moving through and organizing beats yeah. and music and story and time. And so I said, well, how do you make a, a movie that cuts through that? So it's absurdist. It's very what we call an a, a anti-plot. It's not it makes fun of Hollywood movies. It is fundamentally about it's, it's inspired by Waiting for Godot. It's all about existentialism. They don't go in. I hate to ruin it. They go nowhere. That's the joke. <laughs> no, but here's it's a, a road trip here's what movie I said at the beginning, I was to like, nowhere. I, I wouldn't even know. I love it. <laughs> That's but, the joke. But you're just fascinated by it, and you appreciate all of the yeah. the Hollywood and, and the music. Thank you. Um, yes, I appreciate you being supportive. You're a very good guy. Well, good I'm way. not, but <laughs> thank you. You're very honest. <laughs> I, love you so. I, love, I love you for that. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> so, Rylan. Was your last single a little dangerous because you're kind of poking fun at the city that you moved here to live and and work in? Um, oh, it was totally risky. Yeah, and, I, and I've gotten I've gotten pushback from it from fans and from you know the business side of things. I totally get it. But honestly, I mean, if I'm an independent artist, I can do whatever the hell I want. So amen. I, yeah. I I'm here to to tell a certain story. And I, I, I call myself like an anti-socialite, if you will, because I have to go mm. to all of these events, mm -hmm. but I'm very anti-social and mm. I'm not the type of person that's gonna approach you and, and talk to you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So w where I feel most comfortable is on stage and probably, I mean, like behind the camera sure. for a video. Yeah. And, and, well, and when you are on stage, it's like a circus act where you're like, you don't know like what you're feeling. You just know you felt something and it was a spectacle. We've been well, playing uh, pictures of uh, some of your performances. So well oh, orchestrated. Yes. Every video is is a movie in itself, and I love that your videos are not afraid to also just be simple either. You're not oh, trying to you. fit the mold, right? You are being you. No, I mean uh, the sad thing about pop is that people think that it's what's popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I come from a theater background, mm -hmm. so I love mm -hmm. melody, mm -hmm. I love structure, mm -hmm. and I was I. I studied ballet and classical piano so there that is mm -hmm. all about repetition mm -hmm. and structure so mm -hmm. that's what I want to bring back to music because now it's kind of 
become a very monotone yep. space, if that yep. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, oh, thank you. So, um, so that's what I I I, I like is we're, the we're, actual we're, entertainment experience, not just this is chilling. This is interesting to me, especially as somebody who takes the music side pretty seriously. Right. W they say they say, meaning people who are actually really uh -huh. really into this, oh, yeah. that there's this musical erosion going on, and that our ears are getting less and less evolved yeah because of the well and i don't want to blame anybody but the, because the technology the computers are but taking you over blame to auto -tune. Same you same can blame so, lip syncing so it's you interesting yeah. and, and yeah. i gotta i gotta i gotta send this to you i i was in this thing i was like all right, all right fine and and i i i'm an audio book fanatic i'm a book fanatic and i found this book on the history of classical music mm. and i grew up you know studying trombone and all right this yeah, yeah you just shared it on your uh social media i did yes thank you okay. i'm a stalker to you all by That's the way right. yeah. you know. and, and it was this amazing book on the history of classical music and it was an audio book that allowed you were in a uh, you were in this classroom with this brilliant professor and he was talking about modality in the history of uh you know kind of uh, the singing and the sort of the liturgical music that led into the the the, the classical and then the new i mean it was absolutely great but it brought in actual music and said listen carefully to this and you hear this great evolution to our understanding of our own ears right and it is it blossoms into this incredible thing and then you get into this modernism and then you and then of course there's this new technology and you're like wow we are a living consciousness like this artistic Hand, you know, baton, baton. No, it's baton, very baton. true. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating to me, and I think we have a sense of. I, I love to hear that, and I, I can't wait to get into your stuff because well, thank to you. find people who are actually being able to sort of like synergize with the technology and at the same time, oh yeah, hold in our sort of parameters. I mean, I mean, listen, it's like I'm a theater critical. kid, but I love synth pop, so right. I love the sure, sure, sure. I love the technology of how it sounds. Right. If that makes sense, for but, sure. But your same. voice is always true in each oh, of the projects. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. That's um, great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess the, I mean. W in anything we do, we're the common thread in what it is that we're presenting to people. So right. it could be, you know, absurdist and existential. Thank you, it thank could you. be um, even like an event and it could be a, a book about self, you know, realization and expression, but we are the common thread. So we have to put that human element into it. So, I, you know, I, I, I do get a little miffed, if you will, about certain um, hits that happen because of technology and I mm -hmm. get that but um, you know I, I just kind of go back to what it is that I like and, and what I like is kind of what I need to yeah. present to people so and, and rather we haven't even talked about your your season of Glee <laughs> um, and it kind of doesn't matter because we're like focusing <laughs> on you it doesn't matter <laughs> no because you know Glee was Ryan what it Murphy, was I just I can't Ryan imagine Murphy. what that must Ryan's. have felt like with you have oh no, Ryan Murphy yes we, we have many actors from American Horror Story we love Ryan Murphy um but there must have been this like, okay, I'm in the Warblers and I'm wearing this uniform and my hair is cut like this and I'm having to sing these pop songs. Yeah, I mean, I actually, the, the awesome. time I booked it was the fifth time I auditioned for the show. Yep. So it was just like, I, I showed up to the wrong call. I had a dance agent at the time. They sent me to the acting call and I was like, I shouldn't be here. So I showed up great. looking like this and everyone so else great. in a suit and tie <laughs> with like And Darren Chris is like, mm, mm, mm. Exactly. Who was the <laughs> nicest person in the world, oh, by yes. the way. He'll so, bend over backwards. So, well, I'm just um, so uh, <laughs> that's very good for, I mean, I, I'm really glad he has success because he was so kind. He like He's, ate with us instead of his trailer. Like he was like, oh, the Warblers are back. Anyway, um, but yeah, that was interesting to try to fit in that mold because I did do the whole, you know, Southern private school and, and the kids that I was playing were basically the kids that hated me, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So wow. it wow. was funny, but um, it was meta. actually, it was a, a very good satirical turn, yeah. if that yeah. makes sense. Weird to, full circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, and Rylan, uh, your manager, Randy Jackson, of course we love Randy Jackson, um, and working with producers who have worked with uh, every A-lister, and, and I don't mean A-lister, I mean A-plus lister. Uh, do you ever get this kind of pressure or this starstruck quality? It's like, Okay, now I'm I'm having a meeting with Randy Jackson, or I'm recording with somebody that has recorded these other artists. Does that ever play with your psyche? I mean, it, it has before I've actually met them. But when I actually meet them, you know that it's it's a it's a human and it's a connection. And it to hear someone that I have I guess admired tell me something very human and organic, and and actually talk to me about what I do and who I am as a person is is comforting and very. Um, 
inspiring, if that makes sense. So um, it's actually been very pleasant. There's, there's not a single person that I've met that I've admired that has been less than what I think they would be as a human. So well, that's huge because that doesn't always I know, uh, believe me, I know because I've, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean the people I've worked with. No, I've think... certainly met other people in different situations, but you never know what they're going through. But uh, yeah, no, who I worked with, I'm, I'm very grateful for. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's take a peek at Lover Drugs, which literally makes fun of LA in a loving, beautiful way. Yes. And this is just a peek. You guys have to download. You guys have to watch. Um, I paid him to say that. Oh, I'm obsessed. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. But I have to tell you, there's a whole story from your very first official video yeah. uh, t- to this latest. Uh, you play with gender roles. You play with... I love that kind of thing. With great. Thanks. Like yeah. what beauty is in every yeah. single video. And mm-hmm. I obviously... No, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I think every artist kind of feels this way, but I grew up a misfit. So I never actually fit into a group, Absolutely. even with the theater kids. Absolutely. I was kind of the loner and like I, I studied, but I also didn't go to any event, like parties or anything. Totally. So totally. that whole antisocial nature, I think, is something that a lot of people can relate to. Mm-hmm. Totally. So that's kind of what I want to, you know, or see give out there. We're a sea of odd ducks. Exactly. Well, and there's yeah. there's this kind of loneliness. Like, oh, even totally. if you think you meet that, your, yeah. your, your soulmate or you make friends along the way, there's always yes, that sure. loneliness that an artist feels because oh, it's our own mind. Um, and I want to talk, after you have a big event, like, what is it that you do? Drink. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to be responsible. You, you know what's crazy? Kind of I, and and I, I, I haven't really told anybody this, but last year we produced our big drag show and right before the doors open, uh, the Whitney uh, Houston song came on. I don't oh, remember which man. one it was, but no, no, sorry, I take it back. It was Share, Believe. And oh, that's wow. saying, come on. And it's just like At this. At a gay like, event? No, you're lying. Right? <laughs> but it's right before the doors opened. Oh, and it was this yeah. moment of like, holy crap, we pulled this off again. You know, like, I think we all go through these moments of like, when you're kind of like at the point of my, you know, this it's driving itself. Now there's nothing I can do. Absolutely. And you just kind of have this like emotional feeling. Um, and it was really cool. Um, but there are definitely times where doing events you you kind of want to steer certain things and you maybe don't have control over everything and it's kind of like well i get frustrated over it just it is what it is um do uh, or say or control what you can control but yeah i mean when my events are over um it's just like we did it it's appreciation for everyone that puts it on because um like you said earlier it's not me it's yeah everyone it's right. the team it's the staff team. from right. check in the to check out exactly ever they've come in contact and with. what's crazy is the guests don't experience it some guests wrote recently on our facebook like oh your drag brunch blah 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 oh you know the prices went up by like 20 bucks this year because <laughs> we we got cameron michaels who is amazing i can't wait but anyway so we had to you know it's we crazy. have to we Star. have oh, right so that. we have to be able to to um i know you're gonna be excited <laughs> uh, we have to be able to you know to do these you know things cost money as you know it doesn't yeah. just magically happen but people don't really realize the amount of work it goes into it and the time and passion Mm -hmm. because I mean if I didn't love to do this I wouldn't do it it's your life right I mean I love what I do and I'm a perfectionist which is probably like you know my detriment but um no it's the reason why people like what you do well well maybe that maybe that is but um for me it's like you know whatever is perfect it's still not perfect enough but there comes a point where i'm like it is what it is and then you know you sit back relax and take it in i think that's that's like when you put out like, like a video when you put out a film it's out there. There's nothing more you can do. You can't yeah, tweak this. It, you can't, you and you can't through. control it's how like it's going to be it's received. It's like a message in a bottle. Which is so hard for it's perfectionists, by the way. You Y'all know what's fly. cool, though? When I watched all three of you watch your stuff, I watched 
every single one of you when you watched it. And it's really fascinating to see. I don't know if you saw. Yes, what they're egotists. They're in love with each other. No, <laughs> no, no, you no can we're see. normally going like, oh, I should have changed uh, yeah. that. Oh, no, I should have made yeah. this yeah. like yeah. this. That's our natural. Yeah. Yeah, right, literally. Because I, I, I had more money. I could see your eyes like doing this and I could see you're like, okay. And then you're just kind of like, well, you know, it's interesting how, but at the same time, you're like, I put it out. It's out. It's good. And you feel really good about it. Every proud watch because like we talked about your stories out there. Somebody is listening to your story. Uh, Kurt, can we look at a little bit uh, at a little behind the scenes of an LE party? Oh, yeah. Oh, fun. This. I couldn't play uh, a lot of your videos because... <laughs> oh, oh. Girls and boys, just so everybody knows. This was actually from our last year. Yeah. Um, is this the trailer? Yeah. <gasps> Intensity. Yes, girl. I think you should put me in there just saying, yes, girl. This is Piranha. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. All right. Yeah, we bring in lasers, CO2. Wow. I mean, we yeah. bring pole dancers that they don't normally have. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. And this is actually one of the smaller venues that you guys produce at. Yes. Yep. This is actually a, a few, few, um, there's uh, clips in there from Riches uh, in San Diego. At the Abbey, there was a clip in there. Of uh, me with my shirt off being hot, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Drag queens love everyone. It's just, you know. Oh, how fun. But That's I mean, an I mean, party. I mean a, right. a, a nightclub right. or a party event is, you know, it, it always is going to be somewhat similar. But that's one of the reasons why we've are doing a lot of pool parties is because it does promote that come and meet people and come with two Community. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People leave you, like hand and in you hand. You want a different experience. You want to see sexier people than you see at CVS, at, you know, <laughs> on set, behind the scenes. Like, you just want that, right? Yeah. Um, okay, we do have to end the show, but I would be remiss without asking you this question, Gabrielle. You know, oh women in film, and this is kind of actually kind of serious. <laughs> I, we, we like, we're out of time, but he's like, wait, there's one no, more question. No, 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 no because I, I, I do have to, you know, <laughs> I, I love the book. And I was like, yeah, girl, we're going to hang out. Woo, woo, woo. Which has its own energy, but there's also uh, uh, a certain levity that you have. Being a woman director, yeah. uh, writing now, writing your scripts, we see the fun you. Do you think there's this responsibility of women in Hollywood still have to come on set and be like, okay, we're filming this and I have to be this powerhouse? Or can we, do you think women have achieved a certain equality now that we can see oh, all so the emotions? Um, that we can see all the emotions? Because it's not like you showed up on set and cried and be like, oh God, we don't have this. You know what I mean? Well, so Not that crying is feminine anymore. That's what I mean. No, it's yeah. not a feminine quality let me, anymore. Let me start by saying I am who I am. Um, that book is who I am. Uh, if you've read that book, you feel like you know me because that's who I am. I literally um, when I walked in the door, I'm like, hey girl! And but like, when, when I show up on set, I mean, it, obviously it's dependent on if we're shooting really heavy material, but like, I'm myself and people are there to collaborate with me and work with me. Um, so I bring myself to set. Like, we'll roll takes and I'll be like, all right, let's party. Like, it's not, it's who I am. Um, I will, though, say that recently I'm pitching uh, a feature film around that I was offered to direct that's based on a best-selling book that's phenomenal. <laughs> um, and I we took it to a production company and they came back and said, you know, we really love this material. It's fantastic. We looked at Gabrielle's Instagram. Why are there so, some sexy pictures on there? And I go, well, that's uh, interesting because <laughs> when I was an actress, mm. everybody yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, oh, my yeah. God, take more of your clothes off. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like when I had sexy pictures up, they were like very tasteful, sexy pictures. It wasn't yes. like the type of stuff you see with like Instagram models that have like all their stuff hanging out. Yep. Not me. They um, were like model quality pictures right. that you would see in Vogue that you would yeah, see. Yeah, that professional photographers yeah. took that were published in professional yep. magazines. Um, and it was so interesting because as an actress, everybody like loved that and wanted that. And it was like, yeah, that's great. The second I stepped into a position of like power and being a director, then it was like, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. And that wow. I have such a big problem with. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, in this industry, you do have to play the game. A lot of those photos I did decide to take down because <laughs> I'm trying to get my art out there and that's like my highest priority. But damn when I'm at the next level I will be blowing that up because it's 
bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. Interesting. Has everybody any anybody said that to a male? Uh, no, person? never. No. Never. Oh, oh no. You think any Absolutely any not. of like of course, the executives honest, are like, see. oh, you should put your shirt on yeah. in that photo? Like, uh, no. To be honest, though, we don't want to see a lot of the male directors. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Except you. you, you we want to see you. Well, we want to see. Yeah, we want to see you. Do it now. Do it now. That's so crazy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, I've been really Double lucky standards. in Hollywood. Like, I've never had any, like, casting couch situations or, like, I've been very lucky with the people I've worked with. Um, and I haven't come up against a lot of, like, oh, well, you're a woman at all. Um, I think it's because of the times that we're in right now, which Changing. I'm very thankful for. Mm -hmm. But that did, obviously. Do, do you think you're a little way. protected uh, by coming from an ho uh, a Hollywood family? What do you mean protected? That it's like, oh... People talk like D. Wallace knows everybody in the business. Oh no no no! Um, I think I just don't take crap from people, yes, and I, uh, I I have that like energy about me, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm there to work, and I'm you know like I'm an equal on every level, um, and men usually are cool with that. People judge a book the by the right cover, men right off the bat, but 100%. then when they get to you know just you, said it right now. By yeah. the way, the right men, the people that you yeah. want to work with. Yeah, you guys, we we went over time. We did. Kurt Shocker. has to go home and have. <laughs> Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> lovely relations with his wife. Hey. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> this means it's the end of the show. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do rapid fire specific <sighs> to you guys, and then you have to give our viewers and listeners your social media. I epically failed this last round. Oh, so oh, no, I'm I think I really failed. Nervous I was now. a little surprised. <laughs> I was like. Mm. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Not me. What me? Why? Yeah, I Why? think I think it should be you. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Just just answer. Uh, but it, it's it's oh, rapid. Okay, go for it. Uh, as a filmmaker, what is the most overrated movie of all time? Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, that, that's uh, so easy. It's very easy. I that's can't so answer terrible. any of these quickly. Uh, um, overrated movie of all time? Mm. Just like eh, really? Uh, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm gonna insult so many people if I say something out loud. Make right it a now. classic film then. Okay, uh, Gone with the Wind. I don't mean that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? He doesn't give a damn. You guys, it's actually. <laughs> I'm, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. For historical mean purposes, that. it's fine. <laughs> I love that Requiem for the Dream. By the yeah. way, is one of your. That's in my top five. Yeah, oh, me too. Yeah, okay. I saw an interview with you. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, you can make a film with any actor who has passed. Who is it? And I use actor gender non-specific. Uh, you mean actress. Actor or uh, no, uh, who has passed away? Yes, Gene Wilder. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. Interesting. For sure. He would have cool. loved your. Give me a break. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. You are making a film of any musical. Which one is it? Oh, fun. Um, oh well, it's been made already. It doesn't matter. I would do um, Sweeney Todd. Oh wow. Oh, fun. And make it good. Kind of. Oh, kind, kind of. <laughs> I'll think about it. And I, and I love Tim Burton. God bless. No, I love Tim Burton too, but it was like missing like... Well, you can't like, take Sweeney Todd out of Sweeney Todd. It was such a mistake. Yes. <laughs> biggest pet peeve while on set, not as a director, not as an actor, as a producer. Uh, biggest pet peeve? Mm -hmm. um, when certain people know... When certain people act like they know everything. Because mm. you can learn on set. That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. Who is playing you in a film on your life? Who's playing me? Yeah. He is. <gasps> I love it. Oh my God. With I the glasses it. and yeah. all that. Oh my yeah. God. yeah. Thank you so guy. much. We I all became friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just, I'm crying. I'm I crying. love And it. peeing. I, <laughs> I do have to pee real fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Jonathan, I know your social media is kind of like. Terrible. Yeah, it's I don't, pretty bad. I'm, I'm, and it's I, private? I was like, I, I sent you like four I, requests because so nobody denied. denies me. I was like, denied. I'm so denied. sorry. <laughs> it's, it's one of these things. My feelings literally were hurt. I'm like, mm-hmm. I know. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a. Oh Where do you want our viewers? Um, so how about uh, direct them to you manifest? Know what? You know what? Here's the thing. Manifest Destiny Down is the actual uh, thing to look up. But also, I, I do help artists, and I try to cultivate a community, and that's JB Studio LA. So if you find me, JB, JB Studio, Studio LA. That's a place that I, I try to make sure people are supporting each other. Nice. And there's some music involved there, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm a vocal coach, and I try to help people. Yeah. Kind of, God, what does he know? What do? do? I know, do. Right? Uh, well, it, it, wow. It's just one of the things that I, I think we all overlap in a certain way. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. Real fast, I have to say, I think it's amazing you studied with your mom, by the way. Acting. Yeah. That must have been kind of... Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was the best teacher I've ever had. Wow. Yeah. Teachers. Pay. Okay, who wants to go next? 100%. I'll go. God, get it I, over I, with I, because should. I'm going to fail at everyone. <laughs> Jesus. What's the title of your book recounting your film career? Not your love life, your film career. Good. Ooh. Um, just keep going. 
Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's such a good one. Gabrielle, you could go back in time and star in any film. Who would you cast yourself as, male or female? Mm, uh, what Dreams May Come, opposite of Robin Williams. Oh, that's wow. that's like one of your other favorite yeah. films. Yeah, I'm obsessed with that film. Uh, and him. And yeah. I, thank I love you. Robin Williams. Yes. Much Biggest, to discuss. Because uh, I had problems with that film, but I love that film oh, at I, the same yeah. time. Biggest pet peeve as an actress on set? As an actress? Um... <laughs> Independent filmmakers that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Isn't that every independent film? <laughs> At the start yeah. level. No, I, I'm not. Yeah. Wait, do yeah. you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> uh, guiltiest TV or movie watching pleasure? Uh, the Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Every Monday night, 100% I'm there. Wow. Yeah. The ASMR Whoa. of that show, though. The like what? The ASMR of that show. Yeah. How about the Bravo TV? Yeah. I, I don't do, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I can't, you know, sometimes I just need to come down and like chill. Yeah. Off of my intense Her, dramatic yeah. life yeah. Right. and yeah, watch yeah. nonsense Turn and watch other off. people yeah. do yeah. stuff. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who would you cast to play your ex husband in the film <laughs> of Eat, Pray, hashtag FMS? Oh my God. By the way, oh, which has already won Amazon Awards as hey, number one. So. Amazing. Thank you. Um, oh my God. It's like the dumbest actor in LA. David. <laughs> <laughs> he still has to be attractive enough for us to believe that you would yes. even. Yes. Yeah. Um, wow. Good. That's a, that's oh a tough my one. God, dude. Ooh. See? It's you, so funny because I always get asked, like, who would play you? Who would play Javier? And I have answers for all of those. I haven't thought about who would play Daniel. Um, I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. That wasn't his real name either, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I don't. <laughs> Uh, so like I thought the, we had an exclusive. Who's his name is no, David no. in the book. <laughs> no, it's Daniel in the book. You guys, it's Daniel Craig. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Um, no, I don't know who would play him. It would have to be someone that's, like, super, like, sociopathic. But kind of cute. But still, like, Christian good looking, Bale. obviously, because, no, that's too old. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Well, he was, that's wow. he was, like, 28. Okay. It's got to be, like, fair. you Could know. Could it be a cartoon you character, like even? Ashton you know, like, Kutcher, maybe? Oh, I love Ashton Kutcher. I don't know. See, that's the problem. It's like, but then I can't cast likeable. someone yeah. I like because it's no, like, no. Oh. But he has to be likable yeah, enough that you believe. Okay, Ashton yeah, Kutcher. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'll have, Ashton, to, I'll have to start mm -mm. digging on that. Yeah, okay. Uh, where can our uh, listeners and viewers uh, follow you, find you, and please? Yeah, so the book is exclusively on Amazon, and I am on all the platforms at Gabrielle Stone. The book is Eat, Pray, FML on you know Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Cool. And if you're a foodie, by the way, it's kind of like a foodie guy Oh too. my God, I know. I, it like makes well, me hungry thinking about I mean, it. Yeah. Every store is like, I ate this, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm with you girl. And she's like, I gained five pounds. I'm like, yeah. I ate I gained everything. five pounds by waking up to yes. this. As, as you should. As you should traveling. Yeah, as, as you well, should. Right? God, Try everything. Traveling it. when heartbroken? Like, come on, uh, it's like yeah. food. food. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, ladies. Who's next? Oh, you are. Okay, oh. I'll go. Uh, okay. Michael. <laughs> I'll get it over with. <laughs> the most overrated LGBT anthem song that we're all supposed to kill ourselves over. Oh, oh. gosh, probably um, nobody's supposed to be here. It's just, it's played all the I don't even know time. what that is. Deborah Cox. Oh. 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 I need to get out more. It's, Me it's, too, I guess. If you heard it, you, it's it's played at every single okay. Pride then event. Okay, and, and I'm not okay. saying I still play it, but it's I, just like, it's just one of those things. It's Michael, okay. you have to create a pool party for LGBT senior citizens. What is the name of this? That's party? a movie. Oh my god, That's I can't. That's a movie. Uh, That's a good movie. Let's do it. Let's get up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, you're going to be doing a benefit with the that new is. LA. Welcome LGBT to Let's Facebook. Get Up. Wait, that's <laughs> the up. best uh, thing I've ever heard. Love we it. Own that? Do we own that as a group? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Oh, God. Jesus. I just go. love it. And Betty White will be like the Grand Marshal. Oh, my God. Craziest thing that's happened to you at one of your parties? <laughs> craziest thing. Um, Not happened to you, but like what's happened? That oh, you're like, so the oh craziest God. thing is um, we had a drag queen uh, who was a Wonder Woman full outfit. And drag queens are like, they're very they want to be looking good all the time. Well, mm -hmm. the end of the number, it was like, let's get soaking wet. She dove into the Pepper pool. Oh, man. And, and yes. Wow. And, mm. and she not only dove, but she like sunk and then couldn't <laughs> swim. And then literally someone had to like jump in because her hair was like oh, going everywhere. No, I was guard. like, oh my God, she's drowning. Life That's guard. commitment. Though. Yeah, and we have it on video. We got, I got to get you the clip, but it's, it was pretty awesome. I was like, <laughs> oh, she gets up looking like a drowned rat. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I love it. Oh, and man. then she sued you for a million dollars. No. Yeah. <laughs> Who was playing you in a film, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Beyonce or Gaga? Gaga. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Good Thank I love Gaga. What song is playing over the trailer of your biopic? Wow. 
Oh, gosh. Jeez. I know, these are hard. These are tough questions. Because um, I really have to pee by the way. So <laughs> I, I, would, I would probably say, you know what, honestly, um, anything. I, I really have to pee. I yeah. love jazz. Anything jazz because Good. I just like it. Nice. Anything jazz. Okay. Silly holiday, maybe? You know, honestly, I really like the 40s. Like, music from the 40s. Okay. Uh, I could put it in my car. Tell and my viewers like, where they can find you. I really have to go for uh, My... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we should wait. This show is totally. Uh, you guys, can you wait for like two seconds? I literally have to. <laughs> oh, we can my totally God. T- we wait, can totally do, you want me to, do you want me to ask his yeah. rapid fire yeah. questions? Oh, okay. there you go. Oh, shit. Take it. I mean, the show. Okay. All right, well, wait, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can find me at, um, at Hey Michael Paul. <laughs> I love that he's going pee right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey Michael Paul. And it, it I've changed it several times, but um, back, everyone used to always say, can uh, I just, Hey Michael Paul, Hey Michael Paul. And I'm like, Hey Michael Paul. And some people think it is, Hey Michael Paul. It's but just hey, Michael Paul. Is that nice. are we on Instagram or Facebook or like have people migrated? And so I'm so, so unaware. Mostly I, Instagram. I, yes, yeah. I just Instagram. asked this like last week, and I said Facebook it, or Instagram. It was 88 percent yeah. Instagram. It's 100. Okay. See, I'm always I'm part told, of that 88 percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Me too. I'm yeah. always told I have to post across all three platforms, yeah, and so I go to Instagram, and then if I get lazy, then, I'm like, oh well, yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah, right, because okay. right? Instagram's you on your phone, easy to go. As my manager shakes his head in the background. Are we ready? Hi guys, I'm Gabrielle Stone. I'm your new host. Welcome. Um, Rylan, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, Glee song you had to perform that all that you almost threw up doing. <laughs> uh, threw up before, actually, during, or after. Actually, they weren't they weren't terrible. Um, oh god, I, I think I would just have to go with my Sharona. Because uh, like, listen, yeah. Yeah. no, thank you. Because I love we love uh, the eighties. Like yeah. I love course, the eighties, but not that. Not that eighties. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's called cheap. taste. That's called taste. Yes. A uh, singer who has passed that you would love to do a duet with. David Bowie. Oh, oh good. Confidently. Good one. But like David specifically, Bowie. Ziggy Stardust. David Bowie. Oh, interesting. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is one extroverted thing or trait that you wish you could do or trait to have? Oh wow! Approach people. It, it just take that however you want. Like, mm. like no, I know what you mean because like I actually just deal with this with hypnosis. People. Yeah, I do this with people to help them. We should talk afterwards, but it would be please um, hypnotize me. Yeah, I thank mean, you. No, but just this I, is rapid fire, and you still have two more questions. All right, God we're damn. talking about social media. <laughs> no, okay. but like, uh, yeah, no, approaching people in public, it's it's scary. I mean, the, the, it, but even you're if it's like, Isn't thank you so much. Thing? Unfortunately, huh. I am, uh, but. Like even just being like, you look awesome tonight. Like you yeah. have a great outfit or like, I loved what you did. Yeah. I love Resident yeah, yeah. Evil. There being we go. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Right. very yeah. uncomfortable is safe yeah. to me. So maybe that. You. So I just hypnotize me. That's why people call it then... liquid courage because. Oh, totally. Yeah. Right? Totally. Correct. And But there still isn't enough liquid to get me there. Wow. <laughs> okay. that, that's so odd. Okay. I mean, you can try. That's the reason so I had to pee is because our drinks were so strong. I kept pouring. Like I went through these both waters. Bless you. You should be proud. Yeah. Okay. Okay, most embarrassing song on your playlist that you would lose all credibility if we knew uh, that was on your playlist. Selena Gomez, A Year Without Rain. Interesting. Interesting. It is very, it's like literally the most- You didn't even have to give the title, you could have just said Selena Gomez. Oh, God damn it. Have wow. you seen that meme about her bringing her music out for a walk? It's like her carrying her trash cans. Stop. It says, Selena, bring your music out for a walk. What? It's fantastic, but- <laughs> But I, <laughs> listen, I like, it. Julia, you guys, Ryan is like, he, not nah, right now that we're ending the show. Julia Michaels and Justin Tranner are, are responsible for her songs and they're fantastic. But, um, yeah, it's, it's like a teeny bop song. Mm. I was sophomore in high school when it came out. Mm. Hollywood Records, like mm-hmm. Selena Gomez and the scene. She had a band at that point. Mm. Like, the band never appeared, but she had a band. Um, I love it. It's fantastic. It's just pure pop gold. And, um, I'm sorry. Mine is Mbop. I have it in eight different remixes. Bless you. Oh my Amazing. God. That was like my childhood Mbop. right there. Oh, good. Yeah. That just brought me with the hair, like the whole. Yeah. Sw- the I hair, wanted the that hair, hair so bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've yeah. had every type of hair, by the way. Ew. Right now, uh, you're going to cast yourself in the revival of a musical since we're talking about your past. Oh, right. oh wow. What is the musical and what is the role? Doesn't have to be gender specific. MC and Cabaret. Oh. Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would be great I, for I, you. I, I, thank oh. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Smart. If you're producing, um, I'm oh. available. Nice. That's but a good that, idea. Oh, should Selena that. Gomez taking her music Kurt for found a them. Wow. Oh, you found oh it. God. Yeah. Oh the trash can. Oh, it's the best. So oh. mean. It could be X, music, <laughs> fashion. <laughs> X, that was talent. Good. That was very good. Yeah. Oh, ouch. Oh, man. Ow. No, but I think that that's a great, because how do you revive Cabaret after Alan Cumming did it? Thank you. I mean, like, literally. But I think something like just like let's just literally tear he is, it apart. He's the reason why I love it so much because it was he's like so during ninety gr- nineties yeah. grunge, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. to bring back but like I know I get it. You know, nineteen thirties, forties Berlin in the nineties yeah. was. I had a Baz Luhrmann that shit. Oh my god! Thank you 
Uh, so Baz much. Yeah, like uh, you know. is like my yeah. exactly yeah, 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 Moulin yeah. Rouge man. I know, man. Genius, mm-hmm. oh, man. genius. Uh, we, we'll have a whole another show about musical theater. Yeah, yeah. bless. Oh, we, we actually we'll should. Uh, do you? Uh, where can our viewers and listeners find you? Follow you? Download you? I am at I am Rylan R I L A N across everything. So just, wow. just you literally. really thought about that. I, am, li- I tried. I've got to catch up. <laughs> no, I tried. And you guys have right. to download his music because it'll keep you growing in, like when you need to. Great. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, m- money talk. If I'm gonna walk into Aww. something that I feel a little unconfident, I'll be like, Yes. Yeah, this whole city's full of. Ugly oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. We I love making fun. <laughs> Beautiful. I love the hook. Uh, big I thank you to my guest for today. This is what I'm talking about. We had such an Yay. amazing conversation. Uh, right. My guest co-host, of course, Who you have knew? to. Yeah, you have to come see us at uh, leparties.com. San Diego. San it's Diego July twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and even Monday the fifteenth. Oh wow. Yeah, we do. We literally. I'm do probably five. gonna still be there for Monday. Just well, so Monday's our industry day, which is like. Like everyone that works, so right. we, we we threw a party for fun. all the people that worked. That's Will right. you come down and just That's like hang out with good. me? Yeah. Actually, when I did San Diego Pride, that was the best Pride I've ever played. It is so San fun. Diego. It, was yeah. it is so fun, so. and I think it's because it's just chill. Oh, right? so chill! It's like, like people flip-flops, want to speech. have a good time. Yeah, right? I love that. Yeah, yeah. smart. Uh, thank you to Mama Rose in the chat room here, Yay. TV, and you, our loyal listeners. You know we love you, and we read all your emails. We see you. We we're talking about you. Never know we are fans. I get emails from different countries. Nice. We are here for you, girl. I'll have a drink with us. Uh, share us, uh, tweet us, DM us uh, at On the Rocks on Air, Facebook On the Rocks Radio Show. Coming up, we have American Idol's Effie Passero. John Emmett Tracy from iZombie is coming on. And you guys, Star Trek's uh, Keeper of the Key, Rod Roddenberry, is coming on. So I'm mm. going to freak out because I'm a nerd. Um, on the Rocks <laughs> is a place to be every week. Everybody, wave to the camera. See you next Tuesday. Hey. This has been On the Rocks with Alexander. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On The Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On The Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday.